We are live and we are in full high definition. <laughs> Coming to your computer screen, your phone, or sometimes your TV. But uh, class is in session. Josh is going to uh, let me put you in in the pole position. That guy, Josh, is going to uh, walk us through some to a couple topics today, and uh, we ha we have a crew of home growers. Uh, a couple more will hopefully be joining us. Is that your dog? That is George. Uh, that, uh, no worries. What kind of dog? Uh, he's a little uh, uh, Chihuahua Terrier, and uh, he it. thinks he's a hundred pounds. If he's uh, twenty pounds, he's uh, soaking wet. <laughs> but uh, uh, apparently, the Roomba started moving, so he had to go uh, check it. So uh. can't, can't. That is his. Uh, that is his mortal enemy, the Roomba. So wait, can we see that pipe again? Absolutely. And Mr. Chad Westport, if you want to jump on, you're more than welcome. And give us a little background on that. Uh, this was uh, blown by a friend of mine named Clinton. Uh, <clears throat> he blew, he's blown uh, several pieces for me, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I haven't seen him in years. But I've had this thing for probably, oh, I don't know, like eight years or nine years now, you know, uh, it's uh, one of my favorite pipes. I usually I'm more of a, a bong guy or a bubbler guy than a uh, than a dry piece guy, but uh, but I love these things. I've always liked uh, this style of pipe. Uh, I sold them years ago uh, when I was uh, uh, had just turned eighteen. I got a job in a head shop, and uh, we used to sell these little cheap ones like this for fifteen dollars. You know, but they were so thin glass, you set them down too hard and they break in two. There was nothing as nearly as nice or as quality as something like this. But uh, but I still always love those things. I'd, I'd buy one at least once a month to break it. But uh, the good old days with very old glass. But uh, uh, all right. So and what are you smoking right now? Oh, uh, right now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I got a little uh, uh, that is uh, beach wedding. I believe I shared some of this with you when we were at the Emerald Cup. Uh, that's the real purple one. Not a lot of flavor, but real, real pretty. And uh, I got uh, this girl here. Uh, this is a pure sativa. Uh, that's a, a, a lemon tie. Who, who is, uh, where, where did you source that from? So that's something you grew. It was a lemon tie that you grew. Mm -hmm. And where did you get the seeds from? Uh, that was actually bag seeds that I got from a, a guy uh, uh, years and years ago. He, uh, a friend of mine's father, uh, when I started growing medically, uh, gave me this uh, uh, old, uh, uh, I think it was a, maybe a cigar box, I think. But uh, it was full of uh, old film canisters, you know, and uh, it had metal ones, it had plastic ones. Uh, if you're old enough to remember film and film canisters, I guess I'm dating myself. Uh, but uh, uh, these were old even for me. And uh, they had all these uh, uh, different names uh, uh, taped on the side, you know, like uh, Afghani, Thai, uh, Acapulco Gold, Red Beard, you know. And uh, uh, over the years, I've kind of just gone through them, you know, here or there. I'd say one out of every maybe like 30 or 40 might pop, you know. And out of those uh, uh, two that I get out of that, you know, uh, uh, most of the time they end up uh, – uh, 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 herming on me about halfway through, but, uh, that one didn't, you know, uh, so that was kind of nice. It just took a, a, a lot longer than I wanted, uh, to take, but, uh, uh that's what happens when you grow a, a plant like that. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes, uh, uh patience is a virtue and, uh, you, it's something that you got to learn. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah. But, uh, <coughs> But it was fun. You know, it was a, a patience project to just kind of sat in the back, you know, for, uh, I want to say, was it like almost three and a half months of flowering? But and, uh, and, and before we started, I was telling you I picked up the, uh, the uh, solo sprayer you were talking about. Uh, yes. And so my, you said, all right, so you said I can actually shorten this thing because. Yep, attach that to that. 
All right, but don't and, and, and generally off. what I like, so like I have a Chapin sprayer, you know, like mm -hmm. the metal tank one, but it's like for my home garden, it's not really practical. Yeah, that's so I kind of just like something that's like small and nimble. And that's what I, what I was trying to tease out of you is like for the home garden, kind of what are your tools of choice? Oh, yeah, that uh, uh, that guy in your hand. And uh, my second favorite is this one here. But I actually like that one better. Is that also a solo turn it? No. Nope. Oh, HDX. Got it. Yep. They, they were out of the solos, unfortunately. Okay, so this is as short as it goes, right? Yes, it is. And then, okay. You just want to tighten that end after you get it to the length that you want, and then you're good to go. And then if you uh, uh, take that cup, you can angle it upside down. You know, uh, take yeah. that cup. Yep, just go all the way up. Oh, yeah, that, now you got it right. Oh, right, so you can get under leaves. And, and that thing sprays super fine super duper yeah. fun i love that thing that's probably you know one of the uh, best little handheld sprayers that uh, uh i've ever used especially for applying any sort of uh, uh insecticide or fungicide but but it really works for anything you know is that a box store purchase or is that uh internet order uh i actually uh uh, uh originally i believe i picked it up at uh a local store here in eugene called jerry's uh, is where I think I originally saw it, it which is a box store, but uh, I don't know if they're uh, outside of uh, Oregon or even Southern Oregon. Uh, but uh, uh, you can find them online. You know, a solo yeah, I mean, I, I got brand. these on Amazon. Yeah, the, Solo is Two a really big brand. They sell lots of uh, uh, sprayers from all the way from a, something that goes onto a tractor to that little guy. I think that's their smallest one. But uh, they sell really good quality backpack sprayers. You know, my friends from the uh, that do uh, uh, landscaping and stuff, they always uh, use a, a Solo or a, a, I don't remember the other brand, but uh, but Solo is a really good brand. I've had nothing but luck with them over the years. All right, so we All got right. Otis. Where'd you go? There he is. Hey, what's up, man? I was just about to set up my computer so I could give a more uh, comprehensive broadcast. Perfect. All right. Step into my spot here. Cool. Nice. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. But yeah, I wanted to set, set my camera up properly so that uh, y'all can see what I'm doing. All right. We'll see you in a bit. Yes, I'll be right back. All right. So, Josh, you have a couple topics you want to cover tonight. Yeah, we were going to talk about uh, cuttings and transplanting. You know, uh, particularly uh, transplanting into organic soil. You know, there's a, a couple little tricks I like to use, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I figured it's uh, time to start sharing them. You know, we could also do a little bit on, uh, uh, you know, topping and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, trimming plants, because I got a little bit of that to do, too. But uh, here, I'll try to get this in here. You have to forgive me. I'm not much of a, for, uh, a uh, video guy here. So far, so good. We're with you. Um, <laughs> And we're probably like two minutes out in the garden here. No worries. All right. And what's that? Uh, this is a small uh, uh, cherry AK cutting. Uh, that's about... Uh, Oh, about three weeks old uh, from root. Uh, yeah, cl probably close to four weeks, actually. Uh, and uh, I want to take some cuttings on it, and I want to transplant it. And uh, it needs uh, to get uh, uh, thinned up a little bit and topped. Uh, but uh, I usually like to... Do you feel getting all those things done at once uh, is like less stress long-term for the plant? I like uh, to uh, I like to prune and deleaf and shape right before I transplant as well. Absolutely, you know, if I can do that, the less I, I'm cutting on the plant, the happier I am, you know. But it, it's just inevitable, especially with a lot of these hybrids out there that get so bushy so quick, you know, because uh, it's inevitable that you're going to top uh, most of the time, you know. Uh, rarely, uh, you know, I'd say, you know, out of the you know ten varieties I'm growing at a time, there might be two out of that ten that don't like to be topped and yield better that way. 
you know, but those are the exception to the rule. Most plants love to be topped. You know, they love, uh, you know, pruning uh, uh, promotes growth, you know, and, uh, you know, when you prune the bottoms and you get rid of that undergrowth, that's just a sucker growth and let them focus on the tops, you get a lot better profile and a lot, you know, more focus on those top flower sites, you know, and, uh, and all of the problems that I ever deal with are in the bottom foot and a half of every plant. That's where you get the bugs. That's where you get the fungus. That's where you get the stem rot, you know, so if you can clean that up and keep it clean and keep an eye on it, you're not going to have those problems nearly as much, you know, and the more plants you're doing, the more important that is. But the fewer plants you're doing, the more you can do that extra little bit that makes you know, a, a small indoor garden so much nicer to run than a huge garden and why you get much better quality every time. You know, that's the whole, you know, the whole point of growing at home is, you know, I want stuff better than I can get at the store. You know, I want strains that they're never going to have. They're never going to have that lemon tie at the, at the dispensary. You know, no one's going to, you know, take the time to grow that, especially not at the prices they're getting at dispensaries these days. You know, that's a, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully one of these days, you know, fingers crossed, knock on some wood. You know, but, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes, you know, but uh, but I like uh, uh, I like a lot of, uh, you know, as much as I like the new hypey strains, I like a lot of the older strains as well. You know, I think there's a lot of good stuff uh, back there that uh, shouldn't get forgotten about uh, in uh, the land of cookies and gelatos. You know, not that there's anything wrong with those. Those are fantastic. I love those plants, you know, but, uh, you know, you know, they're in every every dispensary. Yeah, but. Uh, not to keep asking questions before you get going, but how far away would you be flipping this into flower? Are you taking that into account when you're transplanting or pruning or just doing it as, the plant, as the plant needs it? Uh, usually the way I like to do it is uh, I like to run uh, a, what I call what's a, a living soil. So most of the time, uh, how long I have in between transplants is dictated by the size of pot that I am, I'm in and uh, how much light that container has. So if I've got uh, this three by three pot, under just a, a couple of simple strip light LEDs or a, a couple of strip light uh, T5s, you know, that are four foot long, then uh, this can get me by for about eh, three weeks without supplemental uh, uh, food, you know, uh, but uh, to get that extra week or so, I just uh, uh, take a little bit more of my hot soil and put about, you know, a couple of tablespoons over the top and water that in. And that keeps me nice and green the whole time. But usually, you know, I've got about three weeks in between each transplant in my bedroom. So I go from my rooted cutting into my three by three, and then from my three by three into either my one gallon or my two gallon, uh, depending on how long I want to veg my plants and how big I want them to get. Uh, if I just want to flower them in a number five, I'll just throw them in a one for two weeks and then transplant that into my five. And then, uh, uh, you know, I'll flower within three to five days of that transplant. You know, just to make sure I got as much juice in that pot as I can. And I got plenty to get me through the eight to 10 weeks, depending on variety, you know, but I still leave enough room at the top where if I need to, I can top dress, you know, again, with some more soil or a dry amendment mix, you know, like a Gaia green or, or some back guano. If I want to add a little back guano, it just depends on the, the tweaking that I do for that plant, you know, and the special little needs that it wants, you know, uh, uh, you know, unless it's something that I don't know, and it's just getting the general, uh, uh, uh program, you know, but, uh, uh, usually uh, uh, with uh, the soil, you know, uh, uh, it just depends on how big it gets. You know, like these, I'm going to grow a little bit bigger and I'm going to flower these in uh, uh, number 10s. Uh, so uh, I'm only going to have uh, two of them in a four by four tent, you know, and uh, that will fill up the whole tent, you know, and I'll get about, uh, you know, give or take, you know, uh, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, with the heat of the summer and uh, CO2 and I don't, unfortunately don't have air conditioning in my uh, uh, current uh, uh, little tent. Uh, you know, I'll be happy with, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, six to, you know, uh, eight ounces of plant, you know, I'd be, that'd, that'd be really good, you know, but it's still going to be fluffy and I'm still probably going to turn most of it into bubble ash, uh, at the end of the summer. But, uh, unfortunately I have a, a nice cool garage and a backyard that is covered in trees and no place to grow. <clears throat> so, uh, it's going to be a hot indoor garden this year instead of a outdoor garden. So that's, that's how it's going to be. But, uh, uh. Uh, but usually uh, uh, with a plant like this, I like to grow them as big as I can in each vegetative pot before I move on to the next one. So my rule of thumb there is usually I want a, 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 a plant that's two to four times the height of the container it's in. So this guy is about, you know, three and a half inches tall. So I've got, you know, three times that height. I'm about at, uh, you know, around a foot. That means I'm about ready to transplant. That's about how big I want them to be. You know, even, you know, even though I'm going to top it and I'm going to drop that, you know, by, you know, a solid, you know, bit, 
You know, I don't mind that. I still want it to hear. So I've got the ability to take that extra matter and turn it into cuttings or just have it extra. You know, I'd rather grow it and have it and not need it and then have it be as big as it can. And that way, when I put it in its number two, you know, I can, again, get it another, you know, if I want to, two and a half, three foot tall in that small container. And then I'm ready to go right into the uh, flower plant. I don't uh, I, I don't have to, you know, veg for very long, if at all, in my last container, which is what I don't want if I'm relying on that container for my main source of food, which I am. But if you're using liquids, then you can kind of just go as you need. It just depends on if you have an automated watering system to keep up with your watering at the end, depending on the size of container that you choose to use, you know, but uh, uh, you can do the same thing with organic soil. You know, it just depends on how you want to get there. But, uh, you know, off of the, uh, uh, something like this, you know, this is a, a cherry AK uh, plant. It takes about uh, nine to 11 weeks to flower, depending on how big it is and uh, how much you top it. Uh, if you don't top it, it tends to have fewer larger colas that take longer to flower. And if you top it several times, you seem to get more uniformed uh, flowers that are a little bit denser than the larger flowers and they seem to mature about a week faster so i always like to top my cherry ak but that is an awesome plant by the way cherry ak is some of my absolute favorite smoke yeah it was uh, uh i was very fortunate to come across a, a friend who had it uh, and uh, for the longest time, uh, he couldn't uh, uh, get it uh, uh, because it was a, 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 a mutual friends and uh, he just didn't want to part with it at that time uh, because it was uh, uh, the big uh, uh, moneymaker when it came to uh, uh, those uh, BHO extracts. It makes oh, them a, a amazing cherry flavored uh, shatter. But uh, uh, as that market has uh, uh, come and passed, you know, it kind of lost its flavor and it was kind of going by the wayside. And I'm like, hey, man, I still I still really like that stuff. Why don't you? You know, if you're not going to do anything with that, you know, pass it my way. I won't, you know, uh, uh, you know, give the cutting to anybody. And, and I have it. You know, I pretty much hold on to it myself. But uh, I did make uh, a shitload of seeds, and uh, uh, those I've given out. Oh, nice! What have you? Uh, what have you made? I would like with? some of those. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I actually, uh, 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 a friend of mine, uh, he uh, runs a very small uh, seed company. Uh, I uh, had uh, given him this cutting while I was uh, in between places and I didn't have a garden. So he was holding on to it for me. And I found an old pack of cherry AK or I'm sorry, cherry of uh, uh, AK 47 seeds that I had purchased in 2000. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I just forgot about them. They're, they're at the bottom of a, uh, of a box. And I'm like, Hey, you know, I, I remember these and uh, I passed them on to him and uh, uh, he found a mail out of there. And that's what we used to cross with the cherry. Uh, and then uh, we popped those seeds and, tr and found a, uh, another male that had a cherry smell to it when you rub the stem. And that's what we used to make the current batch of seeds that we have. You know, when we crossed that back to the original cherry mom. Nice. Well, actually, I say we. He did all the work. I just claim, you know, I just claim credit. Because I yeah, gave him awesome. You know, you know, he really did all the work. But, uh. So I like to go in the inside and clean up all these nodes. This has got uh, northern lights in it, uh, if I remember right. Uh, uh, or no, I'm sorry. This uh, doesn't have northern lights in it, but it, it grows kind of like northern lights in that, uh, uh, you know, if you don't clean up all these little things in the center here, it just ends up producing a whole lot of larf that doesn't get a lot of penetration unless you're running a very large you know, like HIDs, which I am currently not. I've got a small tent, so I'm running LEDs. So I need to clean it up more than I would if I was growing with bigger lights. Okay. And what size pot is that in now? Uh, this is in a three inch by a uh, three and a half inch by three and a half inch square pot. But how many gallons? Is it shallow oh, uh, or is it deep or? Uh, it's uh, uh, 
Uh, it's uh, perfectly square. You know, it's yeah. uh, three inch by th three and a half inch by three and a half inch by three and a half inch. Uh, they're one of my favorite sizes because I can get this. Uh, it's a really flexible container, you know, and I can reuse them for years. Uh, they're not like those blow molded ones that crack every third time I use it. You know, those I am not a big fan of. You know, I like containers that I can wash again and again and again. If I can, I like to put them in my dish. Well, a dishwasher. My problem is I, I have everything outside. So those shallow contain like I use that size. Uh, I go into apart. like five by five by like seven. Oh, yeah. Um, just because stuff dries out so fast and it's Absolutely. so hot. Outside, I love a, a much, much bigger container. You know, like I would definitely uh, be going from a seedling into a, a five by five or a six by six, a one gallon. Yeah. If I was going to be taking uh, 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 this outside when it was this size, you know, but like, because like you said, it, it just dries out so fast, you know, with just the wind, you know, on a windy day, you know, let alone when it gets warm like it is now. All right. Found a nice big clump of compost in that soil. Good Hell stuff. yeah. Very nice. Bomb. Okay. That top dress under this cherry pie. Okay. These are uh, the last products that I use that are not organic. Uh, dip and grow for my rooting hormone. I love this stuff. I've used it for 20 years. And uh, uh, Clonex cloning solution. I use it to soak my rock wool at about, uh, oh, uh, I think about half of what they recommend, about half strength, about uh, five mils per liter. You know, so, sometimes a little bit less. I believe I use about uh, a tablespoon per uh, uh, four liters. And that uh, usually is about perfect for me uh, with. Uh... <sighs> with some hydrazine. Yeah. If I'm not using a, if I'm not making a sprouted seed tea, which I prefer. Uh, this is a nice alternative that sits on the shelf very well, and I don't have to do nearly the work that I got to do to, you know, get enzymes, uh, uh, you know, from the sprouted seed tea. <laughs> it's just easier. If you do make a sprouted seed tea, do you use any of that stuff? Uh, yeah, uh, I still use a little bit of the Clonex. Yeah. Uh, and I still, uh, I always use the, the dip and grow, yes. It, you know, it, are, are you eyeing like natural alternatives to that? Uh, I have, uh, you know, like I've used uh, uh, different uh, natural alternatives like uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria instead of uh, uh, the dip and grow. And I've used uh, different uh, organic amendments to, uh, uh, to, uh, for my uh, 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 medium base. I just like the consistency I get out of uh, uh, the rock wool and uh, uh, the cuttings that I get and the vigorous roots. You know, and uh, uh, I really uh, can't, you know, immediately after uh, I get roots, I go right into an organic soil. And I can't tell you that I notice a difference from using the organic stuff when they're yeah. a cutting and rooting to when they're in a container. Once I start growing them and they start uptaking nitrogen, I can definitely tell a difference then if I use an or, uh, inorganic nitrogen. You know, I can usually tell that at the end of my cycle. But, uh, you know, I've never been able to tell a difference no matter what type of rooting hormone or soak I've used with my cutting medium a difference in my quality or, you know, how resistant my plants are to uh, uh, any other product or whether, you know, uh, uh, you know like my, my big problem when I was using uh, chemical fertilizers on a regular basis, whether in a hydro system or in soil, was that organic uh, pesticides and fungicides wouldn't nearly work as well for me as they would in organic environment. I don't have any issue with that, uh, that problem just by using some chemicals when I root my cuttings. But, uh, you know, I, I do like to stay as natural as humanly possible. But, uh, you know, these are just products that I've used for, you know, for years and years, you know, and, you know, they're easy to get and they're pretty cheap, you know, and I probably showed, uh, you know, a couple thousand people how to do uh, uh, cuttings with uh, uh, these guys. Uh, and, you know, really, that's the, the thing is uh, it's easy to teach people how to use, uh, uh, how to take cuttings with this and be very successful very quickly. You know, like usually when uh, I do this and I've got everything uh, set up right, I'll usually have a rooted cutting in anywhere from you know, uh, four to five days, and I'll be ready to transplant in anywhere from, you know, seven to 10, you know, uh, whereas if I use a natural alternatives, it might extend that by anywhere from a day to a week, you know, depending on how warm it is. And, you know, and again, how healthy my plants are when I take my cuttings, you know, that means everything, 
you know, strong, healthy moms make strong, healthy cuttings, you know, weak plants make weak cuttings, you know, so you're, you're only, uh, your cuttings are only as good as the, the mom plant you're taking it from. So make sure it's as healthy as humanly possible. How do you feel about uh, foliar feeding before taking cuts? I oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I foliar feed at least once or twice a week with all my vegetative plants. Uh, it's uh, That's how I uh, tweak and adjust my growth with my organic soil because the, the fertilizer is already in my soil. I already got everything I need there. I just want to tell it what to do, uh, you know, specific things. So I use my uh, high nitrogen amino acids as a growth booster. You know, I use my, uh, 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 yeah, right there. Love it. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, uh, I what use was my, it? Uh, Show that. Uh, that's the big bottle. Dip and grow. <laughs> yeah, I've been. <laughs> I worked on one of those for I, I swear to God, like eight years. <coughs> Same bottle. I think someone gifted me this about two years <laughs> ago after they took one set of cuttings. It's been running strong. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really love that stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, but I'm always doing my foliar feeds. Like uh, I'm incorporating uh, different types of silica and seaweed to get my plants to either stretch, you know, uh, or I'm using stuff like humic acid and uh, monosilicic acid to help keep my nodes tighter if I've got a plant that stretches too much. It just depends on the manipulation and the shape and size I'm trying to get out of that plant at that time. You know, like right now it's hot. You know, I, I think we just had a huge heat wave. We were this time last week, I think we were 65 degrees. We were sitting at 92 today. You know, so, uh, uh, you know, so I'm going in anti-stretch mode, you know, so I'm going to be incorporating uh, uh, my uh, uh, humic acid as a foliar spray. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, more uh, uh, monosilicic acid as a foliar spray, uh, as opposed to the uh, uh, biosupercil. That's going to help keep my nodes tighter for the next little bit while we're going through this heat wave. But by the time uh, uh, we get to the weekend, we should be back down to 70. And then I can go back to incorporating more of the biosupercil and the folic acid. But it just depends on which direction you want to go. You you can go either direction, you know, and uh, uh, to keep them, you know, nice and green and happy, in, you know, in the small containers once they've been in there for three weeks, you know, adding a little either uh, 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 Cyto Plus uh, uh, or uh, 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 any sort of micronutrients uh, 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 additive at that point with a little bit of nitrogen. Uh, uh, there's a product called Multi-Amino that I like a lot that I've been playing with. That's like a, a 700 uh, zero, zero, and it's got seven different types of micronutrients in it. It's a great foliar spray for keeping plants in small containers longer. Yeah, that stuff. You know, uh, a combination of that and the calcium uh, is how I keep uh, happy green plants in small containers for a long period of time. You know, uh, it's uh, just giving it that little bit of stuff that gets used up really quick in the soil. You know, without having to do something like a heavy top dressing or something nice. like that, that I'm going to have to scrape off the top when I'm chop when I'm... Uh, Going in. Yeah, yeah, that stuff. And you foliar feed it? The, the, yeah, yeah, I foliar feed it and I water it in too. This was the first one I went to and my uh, rigorous decision making was kind of like, I was like, this just looks like it has everything in it, like a multivitamin and everything else is mm -hmm. like vitamin A, vitamin D. And I'm just like, fuck it, let me do the... The full spectrum vitamin mix. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds like a killer foliar spray. Yeah, uh, uh, there's actually uh, quite a few soil companies that uh, are using that in their soil mixes now as a uh, as a starter. You know, so they'll blend it into their soil mixes. So right when you water it the first time, you got that nice big hit of uh, micronutrients and aminos, and it really jump starts your plant growth. But uh, okay, so I've got this uh, girl all cleaned up. You know, so uh, when everything's said and done. You know, I want about, you know, let's see here if I can get a better, yeah, there you go. That's a better look there. You know, I want about uh, anywhere from uh, uh, four to eight tops. Uh, so what I'll do here, about here, then I'll take this. We need like a whisper golf commentator narration of what you're doing. <laughs> Good form. All right. Nice dip. <laughs> Thank you. That okay. wrist movement. So uh, uh, what I was doing was <clears throat> I was taking the uh, uh, last node off of the bottom of the uh, cut, 
cutting that flush with the stem uh, uh, with my razor. And then after uh, I get it uh, that done, then I make one last uh, uh, cutting on my uh, uh, cutting table, uh, uh, 45 degrees, and then it goes right into the rooting hormone. It's that, you know, it's that quick uh, space from doing that 45 and getting it right into your rooting hormone, be it a gel, a liquid, you know, honey, it doesn't matter. It, this is what prevents the embolism is getting it from that cut into here. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people do stuff where they try to take cuttings under water, you know, to prevent embolisms. It's never worth the hassle. It's never worth the mess that you make. You know, just make sure you've got everything lined up as cleanly uh, and as organized as you can. So you're not knocking stuff over when you do it, you know, and, uh, you know, have everything, uh, uh, you know, your pH already balanced. Your your cubes are already soaked. You got your water ready to, for your plants when you're done transplanting. Everything's sitting right there, you know, and then you go and you forget one thing. I forgot my scissors so I can cut the tips off these leaves. So give me just a second. I got to go grab some scissors. We'll forgive you. It's funny. We used to we used to be told to do the uh, cuts underwater when I was being trained to uh, run this like 50 lighter that I was working at this hydro spot, and I was mm -hmm. I was always like, "There's got to be a better way to do this." <laughs> <laughs> well, I found that a good chunk of uh, people's problems when it came to taking cuttings was that part was just lingering here with the cutting in the air. Man, it's like once you got that 45 degree going, get it in something. You yeah, know, the totally. You get it in there, the less it's going to uh, breathe that air in there. Totally. You know, and, and the more you expose that mycelium, that's the stem cells for plants. The more that you expose to the rooting hormone, the more roots are going to come busting out the bottom. You know, that's the difference between getting that makes a lot of sense. To come in, in a couple of days or getting them to blow out the side of that rock wall and knock itself over with how many roots are coming out of the bottom. That's what I want to see. Hell yeah. I don't want to see one root. I want to see I, I want to see 50 roots coming out of the bottom. I want to be thick as hell. You know, I don't want the, that uh, little bit stuff. True okay, that, man. So, uh, True here that. is a little trick. So you take it and you choke it up a little bit. Okay, and that gets all the tips of all the plant, all the leaves. If you see any leaves you didn't get, that means it should be cut off. Okay. And the purpose of that? Uh, think of it like a, a free anti-wilt. It basically tells the plant after uh, all those spots are cut to retain moisture and not wilt. You know, but if I have an issue uh, with bugs or fungus, or if I'm taking it from a plant that I don't know or trust, using some sort of an anti-wilt uh, product is a great way to prevent bugs and fungus from going from one uh, uh, cutting uh, mother to uh, uh, the cutting. You know, so I have used uh, it for that purpose in the past, and I think it works well for that. But most of the time, I don't think uh, using an anti-wilt is necessary. And then I take it and put it in a dome. And then instead of spraying my cutting with water, what I do is I spray my dome. Okay. And are you pH are you pHing that uh, water that you're spraying in your dome? Uh, no, I don't have to. I'm in Oregon. Or, awesome. Or awesome. I lived up there for we're, the four, we're, we're four and a half years. It, it was awesome. You know. So uh, uh, yeah, it comes. Uh, 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 I put a little uh, 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 inline filter on my uh, uh, on my hose tap in the back, and it comes out at about seven two, you know, to That's six so eight, dope. depending on the time of year. You know, after yeah. it goes through a hose, I, I can't ask for better than that. It's better than the well that I had. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm in Southern California, so uh, yeah, ouch. the water here kind of sucks. <laughs> my water kills dogs. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we're like we're doing. I mean, I might be doing this the wrong way, but we're actually doing RO and then remineralizing it. Um, oh no, dude, uh, that's a uh, uh, that's exactly that's what I'm doing. doing. Cool. You know, uh, Some people have been telling me it might be overkill, but I figured it was like new, new, new. Yeah, new. I buy all my water and then I add my own minerals back into it. I use BioAg, like TM7 Sweet. or Cyto Plus, and a mm -hmm. little bit of good CalMag. I use That's the, awesome. the Reef CalMag that Nick makes. Yeah. Sweet. And you use your CalMag as your mineral buffer? Yeah, I usually go so. anywhere from like 60 to like 110 ppm, the CalMag. The water, when I buy it, comes out at like 2 to 7. And I've, I, use, I tested it a lot, and it's been pretty consistent. And then gotcha. uh, with the TM7, I usually throw, like, eighth of a teaspoon per gallon. I think that's, like, half or a quarter of what it recommends. But yeah, uh, sometimes I'll go more than that. But I'm right now I was using a bottled nutrient company that has some similar shit in it, so I wasn't going too heavy. 
yeah, adding that little bit of just something, some sort of a, a micronutrients in there just makes a monstrous difference on how well that organic water works in your organic garden. If you're totally. running hydro and chemicals, it don't matter, man. You're adding CalMag anyway. You're adding this is what I was using. Anyway. The build the soil big six micronutrients. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Boom. Ah, that's good stuff. Build the soil big six micronutrients. Mm -hmm. Yup. I like that stuff. Yeah, it's sweet. I've been liking it so far too. Mm -hmm. The plants are looking happy too. Woo. Oh yeah. There's the homie right there. Packs of the future chilling. Yeah, there's some of the plants. We got a kind of a funny split tent and uh, split tent and open air system. Well, we kind of figure out what we're gonna do with this room, but uh, we're pheno hunting a couple different genetics and uh, got about like I'd say about like a hundred little vegging out babies in here. They're on like we had like an issue where we uh, thought they were like getting some kind of fungal pathogen in the root zone, but it actually turned out that it was uh, just being root bound. So ah. we went up to one gallons and they're super happy now. Nice. Yeah, it's super nice. Yeah, when I'm down, them, transplant. Yeah, true that. True that. True that. It just makes them happy. <laughs> it just makes them happy. Hell yeah. Now, uh, I'm using uh, for soil today, uh, I pulled uh, the sticker off the bag, uh, Organic Matters Soil. It's made here in Eugene by a friend of mine. Uh, it's uh, uh, I use it from beginning to end, from my 3 by 3s all the way to end. And it's my main source of food. I don't use anything else. That's you awesome. Know, I might use a, a little bit of uh, guano. Uh, for a top dressing, you know, because I, I like uh, that's what that seabird guano does. You know, I like the added calcium and I like what it, how it uh, makes my flowers a little bit harder, you know. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, aside from that, you know, unless I'm doing a really long plant, you know, then I'll start messing with like a, a top dressing of like a Gaia green bloom or something like that. But most of the time I leave an extra two or three inches at the top so I can top dress with about a half an inch to an inch of soil. If I see I need that, you know, from that three, four weeks before flush and I'll just do that. You know, that way it seems to flush away better and I don't end up with that, you know, too green at the end. You know, I, I don't I, I want to see all my plants go through the, the phases of uh, uh, seasons. I want to see, you know, you know, uh, dark green, you know, uh, uh, you know, really dark green, uh, slightly lighter green and then a nice fade to fall, which is a yellow, pink or purple. You know, I don't, I don't want it to be army green when I chop it down. That, that means I didn't I haven't metabolized all the goodies that are in there. You know, and the, usually that means uh, I was lazy and I'm in too big of a container, you know, for my organic soil, you know, because too big of a container means too much uh, fertilizer, you know, and unless I'm going to be recycling that soil or I'm in a bed, you know, then that's going to be an issue. You know, that's where, uh, you, you know, I like to incorporate uh, uh, some sort of a, a salt leaching uh, solution of some kind. You know, my favorite one is called uh, Spectrum DS uh, from uh, uh, Tallow, uh, I think is their name, Tanio, Tanio. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they got a great product there, you know, uh, uh, same with their, uh, 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 fixing bacteria. So I really like those too. You know, they just, uh, are never in goddamn stock. Uh, but, uh, what do you think about hygrozyme as accomplishing that goal as well? I, I equate, uh, hygrozyme to paint thinner for a medium where it just, it's like a, a race button. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really good one there at the end, uh, to help, uh, uh reduce that, uh, buildup. I actually like, uh, uh. Uh, using SLF 100 a little bit better uh, for that. I, it seems to work. I find that uh, hydrozyme works a little bit better as a root stimulator, and SLF works a little bit better as a as a salt preventative uh, uh, product or as a salt stripper. Uh, but uh, uh, but I get I can do either one with either one and uh, get uh, very similar results. You know, uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I like incorporating some sort of enzyme at the end, and I like to stack my salt leaching solutions. And another product I like to use is uh, uh, that uh, 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 it's a wetting agent called uh, uh, oh god uh, XF seventy or something like that. Uh, uh, it's also uh, it's a yucca based uh, uh, surfactant that also helps reduce salt in the root zone. It's another reason why I like to water with uh, Bio Super Sil. It's because it, it again it helps reduce the salt. Uh, that is built up over the course of time as, as uh, uh, fertilizer is broken down. It doesn't matter if it's organic or not. It's getting broken down to, to some sort of some kind of available salt, you know, and, uh, you know, I, you know, that extra stuff, I want it to flush away with the water, be available to the plant, you know, and that's what those guys help do. They help prevent that buildup, which helps gives you a little bit crisper taste and a little bit better flavor at the end. But the big thing that it does is it helps you with your burn at the end. You know, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but if you grow a, a big, beautiful plant in a nice big bed and you don't flush it well at the end, it still burns to a black coal just like you grew it in goddamn hydro. You know, and I hate that. 
you know, that, that it means I didn't do it right. You know, that whether it burns to white ash or not, uh, it means whether I'm successful or not. You know, that's my final test. You know, either I didn't dry it right or I didn't flush properly. Or I used a, 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 so much uh, fertilizer that I wasn't able to uh, flush it out because it couldn't metabolize it. You know, there, there's how big a plant can get and there's how big a plant can get and still taste good at the end. You know, everyone's had that commercial stuff that's hard as a rock and is beautiful as hell and it tastes like that fertilizer smells. It's in every dispensary in the country. You know, and uh, no one wants, you know, you, know, you can buy that at the dispensary. Don't grow that at home. You know, there's no point in that. The cardboard turps. True yep. that. That's not what we're here for. That's not why like, we. That's not why we love to grow. Yep, smells like general hydroponics. Exactly. Okay. So we got our plant here. I got a two-gallon container filled with uh, organic matter soil. I've got a little bit of mycorrhizae, a little bit of beneficial bacteria, spoons. And I've got some fulvic acid, full power. And I combined the full power and the uh, 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 armory into the liquid that I'm going to be watering with. And I'm going to use the VAM in the root zone when I transplant. Now, the difference between this and most other mycorrhizae is that it's a black powder, not a white powder. That means it's got humic acid in it. That's going to help it stick to the roots, and it's also going to help it feed the microbes once they attach to them. All right. And there she is. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six tops. And uh, we'll be checking in on this uh, one here in a couple weeks. And I'll show you how she goes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Another trick that I like to do uh, in larger containers that uh, I'm not going to do with this one is uh, what's called a mycorrhizae spike. Okay. And that's where you take uh, uh, your middle finger and you make a hole two inches from the edge of the pot three to four times, depending on its size. I do it with all my five gallon pots. I do it with all of my sevens and anything bigger than that. You know, and it's a, you know, you don't need much more than no matter what the size of the container is much more than, let's say six of these, you know, and after I make a hole that's as uh, long and as deep as my middle finger, then I put anywhere from one to two tablespoons of mycorrhizae and one tablespoon of bokashi in two of the holes. So that's only half of the holes get bokashi. That's important. Too much bokashi will turn. Your uh, sorry, off. the mycorrhizae goes in all the holes. The bokashi only goes in two. Correct, sir. Okay. You know, uh, and uh, if you use too much bokashi, it'll turn your soil into compost while your plants are in it. And that's no bueno. You know, a little bit of bokashi helps the world. A lot of bokashi does not help. Do you that on that bokashi brewing <laughs> or do you just top dress a little bit of it to get that uh, desired effect? Oh, no. A, a friend of mine makes a, a fresh lactic acid. Uh, he makes a, a quart for me every month. And that's uh, awesome. again, I'm lazy. I don't have to do it. So uh, I let him do it for me and I pay him for it. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, but I still like to buy the, uh, uh, the, uh, I can't remember the name of the brand, but it, but it comes in the, uh, you know, that carrier, whatever the, 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 uh, the brown stuff that they use to soak it in. And I, I really like the effect of adding that to my soil. Uh, 
is it the uh what is it man who makes this shit i don't know i got this shit right here this kashi blend kashi blend uh, i haven't tried that one yet i can't remember it, who made this one growing organic but there's a ton of great there, brands there are a lot of them there, you know <laughs> and and you know eat, you know just try them you know there's lots of good stuff out there you know go out there and try it you know, like uh, Armory uh, is one of my favorite uh, uh, products to have around because not only is it a great root stimulator, uh, but uh, it helps fight off uh, powdery mildew like a monster, you know, and I can mix it with uh, uh, full power and get it to work even better. You know, uh, I, in fact, I really wasn't as big of a fan of using it until I discovered, you know, add full power to it and now it works twice as good. You know, just like uh, if I have a root uh, problem and I got a water with that uh, uh, Botana Guard uh, uh, stuff, you know, like for root aphids. You know, I'm going to add TM7 in with that, and it's going to make it work better, you know, every time. You know, and I don't get the stress of watering on uh, that stuff on my plants, which tends to piss them off just about every time. But, uh, uh... <sighs> Whatever I smoked, my ability to remember what all of you all said, like, 5, 10, 20 seconds ago is very low. <laughs> Peter, what did okay. you smoke? Don't don't hold out on us. Why? Well, I think it was one of the snow till. Uh, it was from the dude. The we just jar, smoked some the snow jar till. of We're mixed high. nuggets. I I smoked the uh, some sour diesel from uh, from uh, Soul Spirit. Oh, this fire. afternoon, and I just oh. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I should not have smoked that. Do we mix oh, yeah. the? I uh, went into slow motion sour right here. That good sour diesel Ooh, is just a damn. Fire. Oh, that's that pretty heat. right there. That looks mad fire. Do we mix the Urkel with the snow till from uh, that guy? I think his name was Josh from that's Friday. Sour. The revive organics Urkel. That is some Primus of the best. is super happy. Those look beautiful. Like wet. This God, one damn. is really really happy. That's the Spirit Train F2. This one. This bud smells like burnt chalk or burnt wood, nog champa, and chocolate. It's really, That's really crazy. good. It's got uh, some cashmere in it. Bodhi made it, and it's amazing. This one, uh, this is these are on Daga from Guardian of the Lost Turn. Oh, shit, are you guys losing me? I can hear you. Okay. We got you. Yeah, this is the uh, monkey business from Top Dog Cross to the Mac. And this, this is only on day 20, 23 right now. And these are all stacking like really well. This is by far oh, my, yeah. best, by far the best grow I've had. And then uh, this purple punch is monstrous. I, I can't wait for this to be done. This is only on day 23. And it's like, it's stacking. Stuck. Yeah. These are all like four foot tall plants. This is the uh, biggest grow I've had so far. <laughs> hell yeah, buddy. It's a hell of a room. Yeah, it's a really full room. <laughs> Looking awesome. Fuck yeah. Filled up the 4 by 8 and then I had to hang another light for the Cam D and the Purple Kush and the Cherry Pie. Did you give those three the prime real estate because they're your favorites, or were those just the spillovers just by coincidence? Uh, these ones came into flower after. So uh, I had like the, the Sour Diesel, the Primus, the Sour Nasty, the... Spirit Train and the Purple Punch have been in here for a little over three weeks. And then I just put in the the Afgu and the Bruce Banner are sharing this pot. And then uh, these ones and the Lucky Charms, I just flipped them out here, I think, last Friday night. So they're just barely getting into flower. They don't quite have buds yet. They're looking good, though. Yeah, that shit looks great. That's I was amazing. supposed to have a Gorilla Glue. Originally, the Gorilla Glue 4 was in here next to the Bruce Banner. But uh, when I was trying to put it in the pot, I like I angled these, and I broke the stock like right there, and I could not graft it back on. I was kind of bummed. I have a bunch of clones, though, so I'm going to run it again. But this Afgu is looking pretty excellent. Oh, the white stuff's not powdery mildew. It's, uh, it's either hard. I think it's hard water buildup. I gave them a sulfur treatment before I flipped them. And I rinsed them off in my shower, and uh, I thought at first it didn't rinse the sulfur off, but I'm pretty sure it's just hard water buildup. Josh, our resident expert. 
that spraying some hydrazyme would clean it right off. Yeah, I didn't want to spray anything on it now because I got buds. Yeah, I can't argue with that. It doesn't seem to be hurting it. I'm like 90% positive it's my hard water. Like if I, I can't, if I do any of my dishes with my water, dude, I got to like rinse them with distilled water or it fills the film on it. So you're on mute, Josh. Josh, you're on mute, but whatever you said was probably amazing. So let's hear it again. I'm excited to hear it. I'm excited to hear it. <laughs> You're on mute again. <laughs> the anticipation builds. All right. Okay. We all got super high. <laughs> all right. But uh, uh, I saw the exact same thing in my garden years ago when I was burning a lot of sulfur in my garden. And it was happening in front of all of my oscillating fans. And I couldn't figure out why it was just happening in front of my fans. So I turn my fans off and I wipe them off with a, a with a, a cloth and they're covered in sulfur. So what was happening was is uh, the sulfur was building up on the plastic and it was landing on the on the leaves in a concentrated form. And then it would uh, the lights would shut off and uh, there would be a little bit of water condensation as a leaf touched the leaf. And every place there was water that contacted sulfur, it would do that. You know, it's like a burn kind of. It's like too much sulfur. You know, and then when it contacts uh, water that's hard. You know, it, it uh, does that uh, a weird look to your uh, to your leaves. Okay. You know, I, you know I, I it happened to like as soon as I wa wiped off all my fans, uh, it stopped happening. You know, but you'll notice uh, if you burn sulfur or spray sulfur in your room, it'll build up on anything that's plastic. So make sure that you okay. cover anything you know that's electronic or anything that you really care about that's plastic because that sulfur will screw it up. I didn't know that when I've I mean, been bringing. I've been spraying it. I would turn like all my fans off when I would spray and I would leave it with like no wind for a little while before I turned yeah. them back on. But uh, yeah, thank you for letting me know that. I hope I didn't yeah. fuck up my LED lights. <laughs> no, no, your LEDs are fine. You know, those oh, are okay. going to be waterproof. But it's okay. got uh, uh, something like a like a, a CO2 monitor and it's got a sniffer in there. If you've got, uh, uh, you know, like your uh, once a, a month or so, you want to take your fans out of their cages and just wipe off the plastic. You know, and you'll see a I lot have steel less of those fans. Pops. What's up? I have steel blade fans. Oh, then you're, then you're cool. Then you're okay. cool. Just, up nearly cool. As much. just yeah, watch out for dust. Where there's dust, there's sulfur. And sulfur, okay. when it contacts water, will give you those uh, spots. That's beautiful. That's fine. Yeah, that, that's gorgeous. Hell yeah, dog. Nice. That's what are we looking that? at? Looks very OG. And you're muted if you're trying to talk right now. It's loud in the garden. We're, we're It's a rock and roll garden. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. <laughs> we can hear you. Okay. This one's the NL5 uh, haze. This is like the piffy one. I think it's the hungriest plant I've ever had in my life. It's fading real early. And uh, when I do the soil test, it's uh, I got to dial it in more, but I love it. The ones you have the piff, don't you? I couldn't hear you. What'd you say, Josh? It wants a bigger pot. Yeah. I've been I top dressing plant. how you were saying before, too. I've been trying to give it a little bit extra food on the top dress, mm -hmm. but she's just a hung hungry girl. Try insect frass. It's a great thing. You can feed it late, and it burns out in about three weeks. And it's, uh, it's a usually it's a pretty even number. You know, the other one that I like a lot is uh, this stuff here. Awesome. This stuff is fire. It's a micronized compost tea that's made by a small farm in uh, Northern California. Called Sensational. Men's Solutions. You know, they uh, they sell a couple of different top dressings, and then this is their compost tea that you brew. I use it as a base as my, for my compost teas that I, you know, and then I add my own castings and other amendments, whether it's grow or bloom. But this is a great base to make sure I'm not missing nothing. You know, this and... Uh, oh, This go in all my teas, you know, and I'm never deficient. Yeah, I love tea of seven. You know, but it burns out relatively quick, so you don't get the, you know, even if you have to use it in the last, you know, five weeks, four weeks till harvest, you're not going to taste it. Like if you're adding something like that's got uh, guano or, or uh, 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 bone meal or something like that. You know, that stuff does not go away. 
We have so much action. That is beautiful. <laughs> and we'll cut to our LA correspondent. All right, flip that camera sideways. Yeah. Like a TV. Yes. There it is. <laughs> loud in here but we're running a couple of things we're running uh blog feed lightsaber goji margi we're running a sky cover kush which is a pure kush uh across with uh, i believe uh skywalker kush or skywalker og sorry i'm faded guys um i've also got a chiclets from masonic which is russ x indiana bubblegum x wilson i've got a the covert coffee bay chem is right in front of you. Uh, that's a fun one. There's oh, Banana God Z3. <laughs> this is a really interesting one. This is, is uh, Jumanji from Garden State Genetics, which is a uh, frost donkey crossed with pure Michigan. We've thrown some really I like how that one looks. That's got a beautiful yeah, structure. Funky. I love the leaf size on that. Right? That's Isn't rugged. that cool? That reminds me of a really, really cool old chem dog. Yeah. Wow. I got and then the, the tallest one in the tent so far, which is a little thirsty today, but I gave it a little more water, is a uh, Coffee Bay Chem from Covert. Mm. Nice. These ones are super crazy tall. Um, I'm not sure what the sex is on any of these yet. We haven't tested or anything like that. They're all pretty early in bed. Um, these are probably about like five weeks in. Like I said, we had a little bit of stepping issues with the uh, uh, root bound plants, but overall they've been really happy besides like just a few that kind of have had some uh, possible overwatering, I'm thinking. This guy. Yeah, I'm getting used to the plastic really pots right now. <laughs> yeah, the um the plastic pots too. I mean they might they might outgrow these pretty soon too if I don't train them properly and redress <laughs> hopefully that pallet of soil is on its way to LA right now <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, I, uh, but yeah we're a pallet of soil is awesome <laughs> there's another Jumanji right here this one unfortunately caught going up a little bit at the top but they've been all really happy besides that these are, uh, they're really responsive to, to the, some of the inputs that we give them, just like compost teas and some hemp ferments and, uh, some of those micronutrients from build the soil and, uh, a little bit of fulvic, a couple other things as well. Um, trying not to give them too much crazy anaerobes from the ferments while they're this young and also trying not to, uh, you know, over dose them with compost teas and such if that's even possible. Just trying to err on the side of being cautious because I'm actually a, uh, I'm a retired hydro grower, I like to say, fully making the conversion to organic. It's funny because every time I talk to you, you're adding stuff and I'm like, I hope next time he just water, he just gives them water. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave them water yesterday and I came in this morning and they like, it looked like they'd grown like a couple inches, it was crazy. Super they were like, thank you for not overfeeding us. Yeah, literally, man. <laughs> so, Josh, what wasn't uh, taking cuttings and sexing them out uh, one, of the, one of the topics Absolutely. you wanted to cover? Uh, yes. Uh, I've actually got uh, uh, a couple other plants to take uh, uh, cuttings from uh, that uh, are some, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, what was it, uh, uh, blueberry muffins. And uh, I have not sexed those yet. Uh, but, so from uh, seed, mm -hmm. okay. from seed, uh, uh, I grew them up uh, about uh, uh, you know about the same time as the uh, as the uh, uh, AK here. Uh, just one second. Here and in the meantime, we'll cut to our main correspondent. So I was actually prepping for some All right. some cuttings as well. Uh, as Chad Westport had mentioned in the chat earlier, I like to do a different dip cup for each plant. I start with this many and then I'll have backups. Um, I've been going with a different set of scissors for each plant and then I'll bleach them for at least like 90 seconds in between. And uh, the plants that I was going to take cuttings off are the seedlings in the back, the nerds genetics. And, uh, and how do you get back there? Uh, 
We'll leave some things better unsaid, but I'm pretty nimble in the garden. One might say I can float around. <laughs> but we're on max capacity right now with the, with the addition of the nerds and just all the next rounds getting ready. They're all in various stages, you can see. And uh, we're on all-out overflow status where these ones are, are barely getting light, but from my experience, they'll be just fine out there. These are the Guerrero Blaster youngsters. And to Josh's point earlier as well about uh, really training them up, like you can see, these are just still Dixie Cup stage. They oh, yeah. Were, they've already been good. cut up very aggressively. Mm -hmm. And then when I take a cut, it'll be about right here or here, and there'll be barely anything left. Just these two new shoots, but with like a nice space in between. And then from there, I'll start my framing. I really like to uh, aggressively cut them back in the beginning to kind of slow them down for my cycle and just to really be able to shape them for, for my desire. Oh, yeah. yeah, when I'm growing uh, aggressive, the sativas that grow uh, really, really fast, I do it the exact same way. It's the only way you can keep them at bay. Yeah. You know, they it's, grow too fast. It's interesting how you said about some plants don't like to be topped as well. I haven't had many in my life, but uh, this NL5 haze, you can see how it's already starting to create like multi-tops on its own. If you top it, it just goes yep. to Luca Joe. So it's you have to just keep bushwhacking up the whole time. <laughs> That's funny. I, a, a Northern Lights uh, a haze was like the second plant I ever grew from seed in like 1990s, 1998 in a closet. That's badly. <laughs> With miracles. Yeah, Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. The older strains earlier, I'm a, I'm a man of a similar taste. <laughs> I brought a bunch of plants over to uh, one of the dads who drops his kid off at the same bus stop as Gemma, my daughter. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to grow them out at his house. And um, I was like, I'll take care of me. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> and uh, so he just left for two weeks. So I was like, well, do you have like a bucket I can like, or a hose or a bucket I can water him with? And he goes away and he comes back with a, um, like a miracle grow, like an empty miracle grow container. And I was like, don't ever use this <laughs> on these plants. Like, I don't want to come here one day and find out you like sprinkling miracle grow. Like, like, Fuck oh, these no. are, these are going to fucking love this. Damn, that looks fire, man. What are we looking at? Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in this room. Uh, this is that same one in question in a different stage. I'm about a week behind on putting the nets up. I've been so busy. But you can see that this one, the NL5 Haze, has just one main top. And it's a very strange train where you almost have to train them up instead of train them down. Like You can see yeah. how aggressive I go wow. on most of them. I want them almost sideways in the net. But the, the NL5 Haze, you almost have to prop up and baby. So when I put the second net on, I'm going to pretty much, you know, make this one like that and hope to, like, prop up the rest of the tops to be the same height. But it's funky right now. I usually don't have just, like, ones that are just, like, cliffhanging. But she got tall with no top. Fuck yeah, man. But there's a bunch of stuff in here. This is some ice cream cake. This is a peach crescendo from Ethos. Uh, there's a bunch of the NL5 haze in here, some orange cheese, uh, GMO cookie derivative, and a couple power plants. That's another ancient strain as well. That was old school when I was in high school. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I'm becoming a huge fan of this one. It's like Blue Dream from like before my era, and like no one remembers mm -hmm. it, but it's like pepper. Oh, I remember the power plant. Yeah, it's groovy. I, I had my sample plant that I did just to test it, and it didn't even get to cure or to, like, sharing, really. I realized how much I liked it after the fact. It just got ignited immediately. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine uh, uh, has an old Afghani bull rider strain that he grows for himself. It's the same deal. It was a, the biggest, strongest producer back in the day, but no one grows it anymore. But, man, it's just good to see it every once in a while in a garden. Heck, yeah. Keep that old stuff going. But uh, uh, this is the uh, pack of seeds that uh, uh, I popped uh, some from. It's uh, blueberry muffins from uh, uh, the, 
the nice people at uh, uh, Humboldt Seeds. Uh, they were really, really uh, nice at uh, the Emerald Cup last year. Very- oh, that's right. Yeah, we they were. Didn't they sit on the couch with you? Uh, for a little while, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were nice. But uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, number six, and uh, it's been uh, growing for about a little over forty-five days, and uh, that's about the time I usually like to start taking a close look at it and seeing if it's shown me anything. Uh, or if I need to just take a cutting and uh, root it and flower it to find out what I have here. And uh, usually, if you're looking, you know, you look closer to the bottom. If there's any calyxes that have developed or little footballs, this is where they're going to be at. And if there's any question on whether you got a male or a female... The best way is to look it up in your favorite weed book or just go online and Google male and female marijuana flowers. This, I believe, is a male. That's awesome. I'm totally keeping this. Okay, it's got a couple of little... uh, It's very hard to see here, but... uh, If you look on the bottom third of the bottom part of the plant right here uh, where the uh, uh, branches meet, you'll see either a calyx will start to develop or a little uh, 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 football-looking pineal, which is where the uh, uh, pollen will come from eventually. You know, but one of those two is starting to develop. And from the looks of this, that is not a little white hair. That is a little football. So I believe this is a male. So... Uh, that will be set aside to get pollen uh, here uh, later on this month when I stick it in uh, my pollen tent. Uh, so that means I need to grab another one and see if I can find a uh, one that doesn't tell me or one that's a female. Give me just one second, guys. If I can remember my question when he comes back. <laughs> Puffed out, Puffed out, Peter. It's been a long day. <laughs> My wife and kids are not home right now, so I'm like <laughs> getting, getting faded. faded. I have to make up for all the time that <laughs> that they are home. Now, I wanted to know home. if he has a male blueberry muffin. Is is that something he wants to just? make more blueberry muffin with or he wants to use it as a male on something else so if other people can remember that question for me, back. all right are, are you is anyone is anyone else echo yeah that was my fault sorry about that but, uh, <laughs> yeah do, do you want to use that male blueberry muffin on female blueberry muffins or on other stuff you have yes to both <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, I, I don't plan on buying more blueberry muffin seeds, and uh, uh, I'm going to take it and cross it with both my cherry AK, and uh, uh, oh, I'm sure I'll find something else fun to cross it with. I I've got a a, a train wreck uh, that I could try crossing with it, but that's about as stable as a fucking uh, a top spinning upside down. Uh, so I don't know if crossing anything with that is necessarily good. Uh, but uh, uh, I've also got uh, a. a a friend of mine gave me a cutting from his garden that uh, he didn't end up running this year because it didn't uh, produce enough for his commercial garden. But uh, it was uh, the fastest thing done outside last year at about the second week of September. And uh, it's called, uh, uh, I believe, peanut butter blood or peanut butter wreck or something like that. It's a cross of uh, 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 peanut butter breath and uh, I believe uh, train wreck or blood wreck. I don't remember. I used to run a train wreck cross. Those really crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, you know, the stuff was just super frosty and uh, red haired. And, you know, I don't really give a crap if it doesn't produce uh, uh, four pounds for me. You know, uh, half of that's just fine. You know, I, I don't need a, a million pounds per square acre, but I'm not trying to pay my rent with it, you know, just for me. <laughs> but uh, that might be a fun thing to cross with that blueberry muffins as well. You know, uh, but uh, uh, this is a, a great example of a, a, of a female out of that batch. You know, that last uh, uh, same uh, pack of seeds, uh, the male was uh, a solid six inches taller. And usually uh, I found 
that uh, when I'm looking for males versus females, one of the first traits of most males is they're usually taller and lankier than their female out of the same pack of seeds. You know, and uh, this is most likely a female. Uh, in fact, I see a couple little uh, hairs coming out of the bottom of the thing here, which you guys can't see because I'm a terrible cameraman. But uh, uh, it's OK. Yeah. We trust you. <laughs> but uh, uh, I believe uh, this one is going to get a cutting taken from it uh, here uh, today. And uh, uh, I'm going to throw that in some rock wool. And as soon as it gets roots here in about uh, six days, it'll go right into a one gallon and right into the uh, flowering tent. And I'll know within two weeks whether this is really a female or a male or whether it will herm. You know, because uh, it'll show me one of those three things within three weeks of sticking it in the 12-12 cycle. And you're putting the uh, the plant you took the cutting from into flower, right? Yes, yes. This you're is keeping the clone, which still needs to get its roots. Yes, yes. So uh, uh, the cutting gets kept, and the mom gets put immediately into flower. You know, uh, that way you get a shorter, smaller version. But you always want to make sure that it's rooted. You know, before you give up whichever side you want to flower. You know, but most of the time I find that, uh, you know, if you flower the cutting right away from that into a one gallon, uh, it takes a lot longer for it just to show you it's uh, a sex. Uh, uh, whereas if you take the already well-established plant and uh, flower it, it'll show you really, really fast. So it's just a quicker way of getting there. But uh, you don't have as much uh, uh, plant material to take cuttings on right then. So it's, you know, takes you longer. Sometimes it's worth waiting. What are your thoughts on um, flowering the clone initially or even alongside uh, the seedling mother in mm -hmm. order to see what the future runs will be like if it's something you really plan on keeping, if it's not a one and done, you know? Um, yeah. I, feel, I feel like sometimes the seedlings act a little differently than the, the cuttings do, sometimes drastically different. And, uh, um, absolutely. You know, especially with uh, a lot of these really super hybridized, super cross plants. You know, I find that uh, sometimes the uh, the seed is absolute rock iron fire, and then the cutting from it is just the wussiest wuss of a uh, of a of a, a remake that's a weak copy at best. You know, uh, you know, and uh, I I don't know what that is. You know, I've seen it a lot more with uh, uh, multiple hybridized plants. You know, I see it a lot with cookie crosses. I see it a lot with uh, 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 these uh, new ice cream, uh, you know, gelato crosses. Saw it a lot with Skittles crosses. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't see it as much with some of the more steady, older uh, uh, stuff. You know, even, uh, you know, like the, the Kush stuff, you know, the OG and the, uh, you know, the diesel stuff seems to be a little bit more stable than that. When you're saying you see it, you, you're saying you see the idea that the seeds, that well, plant grows tough as nails, better but, than, than the clones. Yeah, and the co okay. clones exponentially, depending on how much stress they're in, fade so fast it's like the difference between having uh, a lantern and having a torch you know the you know a torch is very very bright and burns very very short that's what those seeds that's what those cuttings from that seed are they just don't last and they don't seem to keep their flavor vigor or terpene profile like the seed did you know and i don't know what exactly causes that whether that's a you know a failure of being inbred or if it's just a, a weak, you know, dead end genetic line. A lot of people work a lot of crappy plants that they should have gave up on years and years ago. You know, uh, uh, you know, I know I've done it to myself a couple of times. You know, where, uh, you know, on plants I, I should have just given up on because there's always something you know new out there. There's always something that's different. You know, it better is a matter of opinion. You know, you, you got to decide what you like to grow and you know what fits in your garden and you know at the end of the day what what you like to consume. You know, and if you're gardening for other people, what, you know, whether they want to take, you know, it's not really, you know, at that point, it's not really up to you whether I like it or whether I don't. That, that's, then it's up to the, the masses, you know, what's going to sell, you know, but in my garden, if I don't like it, you know, it, whether it's the way it grows or, uh, you know, the flower I get when I'm in, I, I don't really like to grow it. You know, a, a good example of that is I like GMO. I don't like it enough to grow it for 12 weeks, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I love, uh, 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 like amnesia haze and i will totally grow that for 14 weeks you know same with cali mist you know i just love that flavor i love that high 
you know, you know, I, I've grown those plants on and off for 15 years and, you know, they're, they're easy to grow. They, they're high yielding and, you know, uh, they taste great. You know, uh, another good example is a, a super silver haze. You know, it, you know, it might be different th this year than last year or, or than the seeds that I got in, you know, uh, uh, 2008 as opposed to 2015, but they're all still really good. You know, and I always like what I get. And, you know, when I when I get the seeds or I smoke it in Amsterdam, it's not all that different than the stuff I try in California or Oregon or Washington. You know, and if it, they can keep it that consistent for that long, you know, I think they've been doing a really good job. But uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there. <laughs> I, I liked hear. it. Wh whatever train that was oh, or awesome. thought it was, it was a good one. So I, I would not be upset if some of the stuff you just mentioned that you really like somehow made its way down to LA. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. Uh, That'd somebody... be pretty awesome. That'd be pretty fucking awesome. Is that where you're at? Yeah. He, he, yep. he, he's also in LA, so he would benefit from, from that magical moment. Uh, 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 I can tell you well. that uh, I will definitely be in California this summer uh, at uh, the uh, Spare Time Show in Willits. So uh, oh, nice. maybe yeah. uh, plan on coming and see me in August. Otis, we're sending you up. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. That would be <laughs> fucking awesome. I'd love that. Yeah, it'll be fun. This is my first year going to that. I, I'm hoping it's cool. Have, yeah. have Prius will travel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, uh, yeah. Get good gas mileage. We'll travel. Absolutely. You know, uh, oh, yeah. uh, I'll also be at the... Uh, the Growers Cup in Southern Oregon at the end of, uh, I think it's in November or December. I don't remember. Awesome. Sick. But, uh, what, what's, what was the annual Oregon event that... Um... It's called, I believe it's called the Growers Cup. Uh, it's in Southern Oregon. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool event. Uh, I can't remember the name of the little town that it's in, but uh, it's put on by this uh, uh, great group. Uh, and uh, uh, they have one of my favorite uh, uh, cups of anywhere in the world. Uh, last year's winner is this year's uh, 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 cutting. So, uh, so last year the winner the year before was I think banana punch. So the uh, six or, or eight different gardeners got that cutting, and they all grew it. And then you bring it and you compare it, be it from a greenhouse, outdoor, or indoor. And this was for flower. This is for flower. You know, and you know, and I feel like all the banana type stuff. It's like it wins the next hash, like. Uh... Mm -hmm award or whatever but uh everyone's got the same cutting but who grew it best that's the contest you know and uh, uh like uh, uh one of the guys who's won the outdoor contest in oregon several years in a row he's a vegetable farmer you know he just grows it right with his vegetables with his vegetable inputs outside and his stuff's fire he does great you know uh you know and uh, some of the other guys in the greenhouse they do uh, really well with it but uh but i love that i love the uh you know uh, uh you know you uh, they give out the cuttings like uh sometime i think uh in uh, uh the early spring or uh, uh late winter so everyone gets their cuttings at the same time that wants to participate and uh, uh you know everyone grows the same strain and whoever grows it the best wins the contest you know i, I think that's a great way of uh it doing is i was spacing out because i was it's cultivation classic is the other oregon event i was thinking of uh, yeah, I think that's a different one. I think that's no, uh, it's definitely a different one. Yeah, D but but I feel like that hasn't been on in a couple of years, probably since yeah. pre-COVID. I think so. Uh, there were so many of them that uh, didn't come back after COVID. I'm hoping that some of them do. You know, they were there was uh, for a while there. There was one like every two months. I was loving it. You know, but uh, you know, either in Portland or or Salem or Eugene, there was there was some sort of uh, weed thing going on. But uh, COVID kind of <laughs> shut all that shit down. I'm hoping Ooh. it starts coming back. The reason I was saying that I was looking that up is because I was spacing out while you were talking. So I don't know if you already answered this, but is the Oregon Growers Cup determined by like everybody who enters smoking everyone's stuff and kind of being like that shit is fire? Uh, yes, there's uh, uh, judges uh, that uh, you can uh, sign up to be a judge online uh, and uh, uh, come down. And uh, 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 as long as you're there and you. Uh, uh, pay, I think, a small fee. You can uh, uh, judge, and there's like I think, about a lot of them. You know, I don't remember exactly how they do it. Last year was my first year, uh, but uh, but I really like the way they do it. It really seemed uh, uh, much more honest than most of the cups I've been to. It didn't seem like anybody was going to be able to buy that cup. 
what 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 I want to do is kind of like um, like I've hung out with farmers where just everybody naturally brings what they grew, mm-hmm. and like every day everybody kind of lays what they grew out on the communal table and everybody you can just notice over like a two or three day period what everybody gravitates to and then if at the end of like a three day just hangout where everybody throws down what they have on the table you kind of were like all right like does everybody agree that that jar over there that everybody was like smelling it and then being like i want to smoke that and then being like that was amazing like people would be like yeah that that was the winner oh yeah that would uh that would be the uh, the way to do it in a perfect world absolutely have like a a weekend camp out you know everyone brings the same stuff and spoke so the, that's uh, what i want to put together <laughs> oh, that's yeah. where i was going with that is like absolutely. like because yeah. c- c- i always hate the like content like It'd be cool if we're just like net more natural, like just yeah. like everybody, just like be it's honest. Like you could, you could cheat the, the, you could cheat the spirit of it, but like don't. Did you ever go to a Northwest Cannabis Club in Portland? Do you remember that place? Yes, yes, uh, that, was that place was the down shit. the street from my house for a long oh, time. Oh, sick, nice. Yeah. I was, I, I've, I've been going to Portland for like, ha- you know three months to a half of half the year every year my whole life because i got family up there and then i lived up there i used to frequent the cannabis club that place yeah i uh i lived up there for uh, about uh uh, a little over five years nice uh, uh, i was there about four years it was great was it wait does it no longer exist yeah it no Uh, longer exists the portland that i lived in does not exist no (laughs) yeah true man i used to uh, scary portland where crack was going on it's back yeah (laughs) Yeah, but dude, the cannabis was so it's fucking like, sick. Yeah, it's a shame. But what, it's a was shame it like a speakeasy kind of smoking club? Yes, yeah. it was a club that you uh, okay. had to join a membership online. So this was the catch. This is how Oregon made it legal. It was the same way they justified uh, uh, those uh, uh, cigar lounges in L.A. You know, it's a private club, so you have to be a member and you have to pay a membership fee every month to to join the club. But as long as you do, you're allowed to come in. The doors are locked. It has to have a, a, a specific type of ventilation system and and uh, uh, all stuff. So basically, you can only do it in an old bar, you know, because they have that uh, those old infiltration systems, just like in Amsterdam. And uh, uh, away you go. You know, you they can't sell anything to you there, but you're totally allowed to come in and smoke anything you want. And most people were meeting someone there anyway or, uh, you know, brought their own just to show. Totally. You know, like, it, was, it was always it was a fun. grand meetup. There were always big you know, you jars going around the tables. Oh, yeah. The, People would uh, introduce themselves through the smell coming from their pipes more than saying hello. It's like, oh, hey, <laughs> what do you got going on over there, man? You the, 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 the way you're describing it, it's like uh, being in France in like a small bar where they were all like super long and narrow. Yeah. And the only ventilation was from like the very front door and literally every French person in the bar is chain smoking cigarettes. Jeez. And you're like way in the back being like, oh, like, like your clothes would stink of cigarettes the next day. And that's that's what it I'm was a little better than that. But that's a really funny. Oh, like, dude, I love that I picture. It. I'm seeing the, it in my head. The first time <laughs> I went to Europe. Like minimal to no ventilation. And it was just like that you know it was everybody smoking packed in very small very old very not ventilated buildings you know and then i went back the second time they had made tobacco illegal to smoke indoors it was legal to smoke weed but you couldn't smoke tobacco indoors in holland uh uh, wow what year what year was this this was 2011. you know they had just made uh, uh tobacco illegal to smoke indoors in in amsterdam so everyone was pissed because all the locals like to smoke those spliff things uh, you know, but they couldn't smoke them indoors anymore. They were all smoking them out on the front porch uh, with the, the uh, with the cigarette smokers, but they, they didn't like it. You know, you could Europeans tell. Europeans love their spliffs and their hash spliffs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But uh, that, that was really the best reason to go to Amsterdam. Really, the, the weed was okay, but, man, the hash. You just oh, yeah. don't see that over here. You know, Moroccan and. I Indian. mean, that shit would fuck me. I, it was the tobacco hash combination that always fucked me. Oh, up. yeah. That, uh, uh, yeah, and it would uh, uh, give me a hangover. It would always give me a headache like a couple hours later, you know, especially that really thick black tobacco <laughs> that's like, looks like it belongs inside of a cigar. Uh, ugh. 
but uh, but yeah, I, I gotta say it, it was fun. Yeah, it was real fun. But uh, but yeah, that uh, <laughs> the, the I had a lot of hash blackout experiences. <laughs> oh yeah, I feel that. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> I feel like the combination of lots of drinking while I was out there, combined with the hash and tobacco, would just lead to me like spinning, just feeling like lying like in my hotel, just being like, oh, I gotta like I need some fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I remember going to a club with these French guys and, uh, you know, let's say it's like 11, 1130 at night. We get there and we like park somewhere and in the car, they're like, all right, let's do a quick smoke. We'll hit the club. And we smoke, you know, hash tobacco. And I'm like, I can't make it. <laughs> they're like, what? I'm like, I'm good in the car. So I, I, I remember I, I, for like the six hours that they were in the club to like it's almost getting light out in the morning, I was just comatose in the car. And then I woke <laughs> up and I was like, I'm still good right here. Like, I don't want to move. Like, I'm not going to try to get in that club. I'm, I'm just going to chill till they get back. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I know that feeling. But then if those guys did like a bong rip, like when I would be like, yeah, in the U.S. we just like smoke straight flour. And they were like, oh, my God, like, how do you do that? <laughs> People still to this day, like if you tell them, even, you know, some of my English. Say incroyable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is unbelievable. <laughs> oh, man. At some of the coffee shops in, in Amsterdam, they'd get kind of pissed. You know, they, they'd see me and uh, my buddy coming and they'd automatically open the door, turn on the ozone generator and be like, these fucking Americans again, they're going to smoke up a whole fucking place. And I'm like, I thought this was a hash bar. I thought that's what we we're supposed to do here. You know, now everyone else is smoking spliffs. And we're sitting there fucking smoking bongs and smoking, you know, straight joints and, you know, uh, and uh, mixing hash in with the joints. And then they burn for like a half an hour. And yeah, but, uh, but the best part was so uh, awesome. we, were, we were staying at this hotel that was right down the street from the Church of Scientology in Amsterdam. Holy so shit. we're walking down the street. <laughs> this is also 2011? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, and 2009. Right. We stayed in the same spot just because of these guys. And every time we walked by, <laughs> eventually they'd walk away when they'd see us because we'd be like, oh, wait, wait, tell us the story about the volcanoes and the fucking things again. You know, what do they call it? What's my level you're going to check? Your feet like, sorry, I don't have any money. I oh, mostly okay. love that the yeah, Church of Scientology it. conquered Amsterdam. They were like... Like we met, like we have a new outpost in Europe. <laughs> We're making oh, yeah. headway, and they, they just stand out front and uh, try to get you to buy their book, and you know, come in and take your whatever levels, feet and levels or something. Dude, but, it's uh, crazy in LA. I live near the gigantic like Church of Scientology. Oh, you know what I'm talking about, then? In, in Westwood, Dude, right? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. It is. I I I met. Um... Oh God. The so the head of PR, like the spin master for the Church of Scientology, was Whoa. one of the the dads. It was Gemma, my oldest daughter's like mommy and me class. Like one of the other moms was a, was the wife of the head of like he was in that movie kind of exposing the church like he, he totally. was the the, oh, the, the 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 spokesperson for the church <laughs> and i was like Crazy. holy shit that's the dude whose house i was at two weeks ago that's <laughs> fucked <laughs> and i was like i was like this is so trippy nobody's gonna like trying to be like that's the person whose house i was just hanging out at oh well, yeah that's funny that's a fucking trip man but yeah, that building is very large. They own a lot of real estate. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. Sketchy stuff. Sketchy stuff. All right. I love when Zappa uh, plays on them, like the Church of Appliantology. If any of you guys are hip to Joe's Garage, it's like L. Ron, it's L. Ron Hoover. <laughs> the Church of Appliantology. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. All right. All right. So, Josh, do we have uh, do we have any questions from the peanut gallery? Well, we have Josh. People watching. People with. 
Otis, you look like, I always say, whenever I see that headset, I'm always like, you're flying like a Cessna 172. I like to think, I like to think so. I, I fucking love aviation. I got my whole yeah. like, simulator set up at home. It flying makes all me kinds of feel shit. like we're on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right? Some Sweet. gamer shit. <laughs> got the gamer headset in the veg room. Nice. <laughs> we have people, we have tuning in from Thailand, and I what just up, saw God, your... Awesome. I just saw your message on Instagram. Uh, I'm reading it right now. Uh, I'd love to, love to go and visit me some Thailand. Whoa. I want to go eat some street May food in Thailand. Maybe he'll invite us. One at a time. One at a time. What's that? Didn't Thailand just legalize cannabis in some well, way? So he was just explaining uh, in his IG message to me uh only concentrates with 0.2 percent thc are illegal and all flour is allowed whoa so no concentrates but all flour Be yeah, because, so, no so what i what i originally understood was that it was basically like we've legalized cbd that's what i and, thought too but uh and that's cool if they legalized uh, uh thc uh uh cannabis All right, so so I I think the I'm um, tell me if the yeah is to like <laughs> weed that gets you high in flower form is legal because that's not how I understood in the conversations I've had, but that's awesome. I saw this one guy uh, who um, owns like a big like uh like commercial cannabis company okay, there that we go. has operations going in thailand fuck yeah man <laughs> that's awesome that's crazy was that fresh news when you got there Captain, I... or no or did you like already know that because if you landed and learned that that's like so <laughs> you're like you're like i was already happy to come anyway this is the cherry <laughs> on top <laughs> but his question was did you know that before you landed or was that new information once you got there? That'd be so cool. Oh, dude, yeah, you? I'm totally, uh, uh, now I know where I'm going as soon as I get my passport renewed. <laughs> True that. Oh, yeah. Future yeah. Cannabis we'll, Project we'll, Highlight we'll Stream. We'll send his, uh, his home address there. <laughs> we'll post it for everybody. Yeah, is he living in Phuket? Because that's where I'm going. No. Yeah, no. That, all right, so that's amazing. So he didn't know that. He had the same thinking I did, or and everyone here did, that it was just like they've like that's what I couldn't understand. It's like they've legalized CBD, and like every news outlet is covering it. Like it's this huge, like the first Asian country, and it's like to legalize CBD like <laughs> yay team uh but that's awesome uh, they've been uh, uh, they were one of the ones that uh, was made illegal uh with Nepal and all the rest of them when Reagan uh, or no it wasn't Reagan it was uh, Nixon went around and bribed everyone to make uh, uh, marijuana illegal you know it was legal there in Asia for you know forever you know and then yeah. uh, 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 Nixon went around and I remember, I think you paid like the king of Nepal like six million bucks. And, you know, he just went and bought off all the governments. Like, here's the money, make the hash illegal. You know, it had been legal for thousands of years. They had these old hash stands. I have these old hash books that have pictures of these uh, bazaars and hash markets in Asia, you know, where they have these big coils of hash like this big. And there's like 10 of them out sitting on a table. And one of them's in the shape of a cobra. And, I mean, they're fucking sweet, you know, but, you know, all that shit was made illegal overnight. And all of a sudden it was a black market. And, you know, if you're going to grow something and it's black market, probably opium's worth a little bit more than ash and a lot less work. You know, so it all that's what it all ended up being after the Vietnam War, unfortunately. But I'm glad to see it legal now. Hopefully uh, we'll start to see some of that good tie again. That would be fucking sweet. True. Yeah, I, I get depressed because I talk to people about, like, getting, you know, having them send kind of heirloom land race stuff from their regions and they're like and can you send back some and they'll give me lists of like modern kind of cuts and crosses uh -huh. and i'm like oh please don't make me send that back there i'll like 
if suddenly it, it'd be like sending an invasive species <laughs> to, exactly. to like, like we want oh, this Asian beetle that eats every plant. Like you want me to send it to you in America? Like, okay. <laughs> like I went all the way to the top of this mountain in Nepal and what did I find? Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Like, son of a bitch, I could have gotten that in LA. Yeah, I was sad when I when I saw their like announcement. They're like, we're opening the fifty first cookies in the world, and I was like, ah. Oh. Uh, is that really what we need? I think there's a cookies Thailand, which uh, makes me. It, it, it's kind of like seeing McDonald's getting exported. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. I, mean, I guess it's uh, you know, in some ways, you know, go America. Like Starbucks, way. McDonald's. And they're Made like, and we will bring our cookies crosses <laughs> to you Thai people who have never known such good weed. Oh, God, that. I feel like it's just the start of that, like the baby steps. Like, even though it seems so monumental now, it's <laughs> like it's going to yeah. be so much more disgusting, I feel like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, cookies in Bangkok. Oh, my God. It's like at least there's still some street cats for now. It's like God knows what's yeah. next. Oh it's man! It's like having uh, like the cook. Well, all right. Yeah, I won't go there. Yes, yes. But we all like we all like the uh, the real exotics. The term exotic has been uh, thrown around too much. It means the wrong thing these days. But exactly, the, the real exotic hunters know what we like. Well, and, you know, go, don't get me wrong. I, I like cookies. You know, the forum cuts a good plant. You know, it just, I look at that and I look at like the old OG we used to grow and that goddamn cookies is a, it's a dream. It's so easy to grow. You get so much. And, you know, that goddamn OG would give so little for so much work. <laughs> you know, goddamn it. <laughs> you know, I, you know, we, we'd have the sour diesel sitting in the same room and we'd get like four ounces versus like 18. You know, and we'd still have to grow the OG because it's an freaking OG. You know, and uh, it was just so much fucking work. And and then all you know these easy to grow strains come out, and you know the they're, they're don't get me wrong, it's awesome. I, I love to see it. You know, but uh, but that's not what I think of when I think of exotic. You know, I think of you know flavors and tastes that I just don't see anymore. You know, you know that really that. good weed that tastes like black licorice. You know, that really good weed that you know really tastes like mint and really tastes like pine. You know, I never see, I never find that shit at the dispensaries anymore. All, all I see is fucking, you know, different shades of a uh, 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 Kush, a uh, 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 GMO, and a uh, 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 Gorilla Glow. You know, yeah. I, you know, if I'm lucky, I, I get some good gelato or some uh, uh, good ice cream cake here or there. You know? I feel like but, Oregon got hit with the Gorilla Glue wave really hard in like 2015, really? 16, 17. I remember that being like the like. It was flooded, man. It was. So there was just too much of that stuff. And it was a good plant. I liked it. It was yeah, a fast grower. Too much of it, you know. You know, but uh, you know, but it, everything's kind of cyclical. It kind of goes away and then comes back. You know, I never thought Blue Dream would become popular again. You know, and uh, you know, here it is. I know people that can't grow enough of it. Can we, you know, can, we or, can, can we expand on that? Because my mind is absolutely blown by that as well. Like, shocked. Like, like, like I saw a guy go into a fucking dispensary with two pounds of absolute fire. And he's like, no, nah, I got to go back and get my blue dream because he wanted two more pounds of that. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? You took in? Did you take in the same pot that you showed me? Yeah. I'm like, and I, I guess you got to sell what sells. But, Did you know, I guess... Do you think it's because the new market doesn't want such a heavy buzz or do you think people are actually enjoying it because it's just something different, like you're saying, as opposed to like the gelatos and Skittles and cookies uh, and stuff? Like, I think that I, it, I, I, I don't get it. I'm like, it's tripping me out. <laughs> I think it's the, the people that smoke. I think it was two things. I think it's the market adjusting for the dispensary crowd, which, yes, likes a milder buzz and a, and a more profound flavor. They're more likely to like a weaker tangy than a stronger fucking uh, ice cream cake, you know, because uh, that's going to give them panic attacks. And they like to smoke yeah. weed, so they want to smoke a couple joints. And if they do that with the ice cream cake, they're going to wake up on the floor, you know. But if they do that with the tangy, you know, they'll, they'll be fine, you know. So that uh, blue dream goes a little further. It's also those kids that were smoking that in high school are now adults, yeah, you know. And that was that that was that dank weed back in high school. Like, oh, yeah. here's the crap, here's the crap. Oh, that blue dream again. 
You know, so yeah. it, the stuff you had in high school, doesn't matter how good it was, it was the stuff from high school. So it was the best. Yeah. You know, no, I, that, that, resonates stuff, with, you know? that resonates with me totally. That's why I have that NL5 Hayes cut. I'm chasing exactly, like, you know, high school flavor. <laughs> you know, that's why I still rock the uh, the Cherry AK, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, I love that old uh, AK high. And, and it's just so different than anything that you get at the dispensary. You know, if I, you know, uh, if the AK stops, uh, uh, you know, a uh, uh, buzz stops uh, giving to me, I just give it up for a month and go back to the, you know, the uh, the GMO crosses and the unicorn and all that other stuff. And, you know, as soon as I pick it back up a month later, you know, it flattens me again, you know, but but I like that about those uh, those different type of uh, strains like that. You know, same with, the, you know, a, a nice different super silver haze or, or a nice sativa. You know, that's the other thing that, you know, sure you can find, uh, you know, sometimes you can find a good uh, uh, super silver haze or or uh, or an amnesia haze, but rarely do you see anything different than that. You know, I, if you're lucky, you can find like a good Durban poison. I love me a good Durban poison. Yeah. You know, and that seems to be more around here in Eugene than uh, than I see in most places. But, I'm running uh, a Durban cross right now. I'm super excited for the Durban cross with Chem Coffee Bay Chem. Oh, nice! That's gonna be sick. Yeah, that bye. sounds awesome. Yeah, from Covert. That one's gonna be sick. Yeah, that's the well, that's the. I mean, so far that's been one of the craziest, most vigorous out of all of them. Maybe it's the Durban in it. Yeah, the Durban is a monster plant. I mean, I, that uh, you know, uh, I I saw that plant go through so much crap. You know, but uh, uh, a friend of mine's do, uh, growing a Malawi right now. Uh, that's uh, uh, really interesting. Uh, that uh, he got, uh, you know, uh, one phenotype that uh, you know, basically tastes like nothing. Uh, you know, like stems and herb. I'm not really a big fan of that one. And then another one that tastes like uh, uh, mangoes. Holy you know? shit! Uh, but uh, you know, I'm really looking yeah, forward. I'm hoping to hoping for a keeper with these. You know, but uh, uh, you know, we're talking, you know, 14 and a half, you know, 15 weeks of flowering. You know, but. Uh, you know, uh, but luckily it uh, stretch. It never stops stretching, so you can start flowering it when it's you know like half this big, you know. And when it's done, it's about as tall as me at about five eleven. Holy shit! So, you know, but it takes a uh, uh, damn near, uh, <laughs> you know, a uh, 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 you know a uh, uh, fourteen fifteen weeks to get there. You yeah. know, and you'll definitely have to you know adjust your light cycle at the end to get it to finish. You know, drop it from twelve down to eleven or ten. You know, just to get the right hairs to stop coming. You know, I find that that, uh, you know, I don't have to do with all strains, but, uh, you know, anything that takes longer than uh, 13 weeks, I usually do that just to be sure. You know, even if it does make him uh, a herm at the very end, at that point, I'd just rather see him finish than white hair at me. And that way I get more of a solid flower at the end. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, but sativas are a whole nother uh, 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 ball of wax when it comes to, you know, keeping them happy and keeping them on a treadmill. It's not about you know, feeding them heavy and getting them that army dark green. It's about keeping them a consistent happiness the whole time. And the big thing, having as much root space as humanly possible. You know, they do not, they are, they absolutely hate being root bound in any and every way. And if you are growing your normal stuff in sevens, you need a 15 for that sativa. You know, it's just going to love it. It'll give you way more. You just need to make it light and fluffy so you can water it at the same rate you're watering the other guys. You know, that's yes. the difference. So it's the same amount of soil, same amount of soil, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, fertilizer that would be in your uh, seven. You just fluff it up to a fifteen, you know, and uh, you know that extra mass allows the roots to not spin or get crazy pissed off when they go That's through awesome. or hit the sides. You know, oh, I, I yeah. saw them doing that in Amsterdam uh, with uh, uh, with rock wool. They were actually growing a giant, uh, 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 you know, eight foot tall uh, 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 sativas, you know, hazes in uh, in uh, I think they were like. 30 gallon or 40 gallon pots full of loose rock wool. And, uh, you know, they were giant, they were huge, you know, and they, they had uh, lights that it was the first time I ever saw a light was 14 foot in the air. And I just thought it was the craziest thing. And, uh, you know, but it, it grew an absolutely beautiful, uh, a Thai plant, you know, and I have imitated it a couple of times, but when I started doing it with organic soil is really where I got the best results by far, you know, uh, you know, rock wool is fun, but, uh, you know, that organic soil is what gives you the crazy flavor, especially with those. Totally, things. man. It take a long, long time. It's just, Keeping that soil blend happy, and the big thing is, I found is uh, with Steve's is calcium, shitloads of calcium. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, in just about every form I can get it. Usually, uh, when I'm running something like that, uh, I'll, I'll run uh, uh, at least three different forms of micronutrients and calcium. You know, uh, you know, uh, 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 a month or a week. You know, and the further I get into my cycle, the more I got to incorporate it because the less is in the soil. Such as, uh, uh, well, uh, such as uh, uh, I like to use a lot of uh, top dressings of rock dusts, you know, like a, a, a volcanic rock dust, 
you know, I'll uh, uh, take a combination of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, oyster shell and uh, uh, basalt, and I'll do a couple of those spikes that I was telling you about, but instead of mycorrhizae, I'll put uh, a couple, maybe three or four uh, tablespoons of that combination in it, so it's slow-releasing calcium in my bed, you know, or in my pot. As long as it's bigger than a, 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 a 30 gallon pot, you know, and it's going to be there for more than uh, 13 weeks. I find that's a great way to have slow releasing uh, uh, large amounts of calcium. Uh, another good way is with uh, uh, any sort of uh, uh, liquid organic calcium product. Uh, uh, my favorite these days is uh, amino based ones. In fact, you got one uh, uh, that's the uh, Calmino uh, 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 right behind you there. Uh, that is, uh, 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 yeah. You know, that uh, is the most uh, uh, readily av available form of calcium that I've ever used. Uh, because Yeah, of, I might need one of those, Peter. <laughs> oh, yeah. This shit is awesome for uh, keeping plants happy in containers when they're old. Because of the way it's made, the nitrogen and the calcium in there is already broken down to the point where the plant doesn't have to use any energy to eat it. You know, so it's already it's already there. It's already in an already digestible form. So it just, you know, takes it like that. You know, and it's uh, about the consistency of coffee creamer. So, so is, is that a, so that's a fast release kind of? Oh, it's very quick. Yeah. Okay. You know, so uh, but it's super gentle. You can use it at four times the recommended dose and you'll just waste it. You know, I've never been able to hurt a plant with it, you know, uh, but uh, usually I'm using it at somewhere between uh, uh, two to four uh, teaspoons per gallon. You know, depending on how awesome. old the plants are and uh, the effect I'm going for. The harder I use it, the less I use it. So if I'm only watering once every month to two weeks, I'm using, you know, full strength, you know, 20 mils, 30 mils. You know, but usually a little bit all the time is always going to work better, especially with sativas and hard to feed plants like those old OGs and like these finicky old cuttings. You know, your uh, your OGKBs and, you know, uh, Bubba Kushes and whatnot. You know, they're just finicky as shit. They're old and they're beat up. You know, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, having a way to give them uh, it's an available calcium all the time is a great way to make them much, much stronger and more resistant to just about everything. You know, and nothing pisses them off more than putting them in a container that's root bound with not enough calcium in it. You know, any old cutting is just going to get real pissed on you, real yellow and real angry. He's looking at you, Otis. Oh, uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, Peter, you're going to have to give me a bag of that stuff, man, especially because I'm running that pure Kush cross with Skywalker. But uh, that's We're a going to make dreams way. come true. You know, uh -huh, and uh, uh -huh. with your NL5, <laughs> uh, if you get any early yellowing, that's a great way uh, to remineralize it and get you that green. It's either the, uh, you know, my first choice would be the, the Calmino, but a combination of it 50 50 with the multi amino would give you the balance of the micronutrients and the calcium. But it just depends on which it's missing the most. You know, you'll find that. Uh, uh, during some stages, uh, the beginning of flowering, you know, those first four weeks, it's going to be more micronutrients and less calcium. But after that four weeks, after the calcium has been absorbed and the flowers have already set, the micronutrients needs to go down and the calcium and phosphorus needs to go up. And if you can supplement that with sulfur, you can increase uh, your uh, flavor as well. I love that. I love the approach of using the bigger container as well that you saw in Amsterdam. I think that's something I'm going to try to implement. That was uh, yeah. You, was you don't very need more to me. Yeah, you don't need more fertilizer. You just need physically more space for the roots, and you know you get that bigger burly stock. And really, once I get that stock size with my sativas, I know I'm good. You know, uh, you know, as soon as I get that, you know, that chunker, and it looks like I need to chop it down with a a freaking uh, axe. You know, that's a, that means I'm going to get a good yield out of that plant and it's going to be tougher and more resistant. When I get those spindly little things and I got to do that million bits of tie up, I hate that. You know, I don't like that. That, that usually means I'm going to have more problems than I want to have. I forget what pot size are you maxing out at? Uh, in my little garden, uh, I max out at a, a, about a 10 gallon. Okay. You know, but is that I, what that big black one was? Uh, the uh, big black one was actually a, uh, 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 I believe, a two gallon. That yeah, I transplanted. Bigger than... I th I felt like you were like holding it like that. Maybe I was. No, that was just a, a two gallon. Okay. You know, uh, but uh, uh... so you're gonna go up again from that. Yes. Okay. You know, from that, that's gonna go into the ten. Uh, once. So from that to ten. So from that to the final pot. Yep. Okay. You know, and uh, that'll veg under a little uh, four lamp T5 for the next uh, probably two and a half to three weeks till I get to the size that I want. And then and that'll go. And you think we're going to have that conversation in how many weeks from now? Oh, uh, 
from when he just went into the two gallon? Oh, the one that went into the two gallon in anywhere from two to three weeks that'll be ready to go into a, a, a okay. 10 gallon and ready to flower. Okay. You know, and it should be at least twice to three times the size it is now. But we shall see. You know, the you know, the season is upon us. It's getting hot. You know, as long as I don't forget to water. And today is June twenty seventh. <laughs> yes. All right. So so sometime late July. Yep. Okay. I like to finish in ten gallons as well. Yeah, I find that that uh, anywhere from uh, 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 an, a, a five, an actual true five gallon bucket, uh, you know, one cubic foot container. Uh, to a uh, to a fifteen is my perfect zone most of the time if I'm hand watering, you know if I'm hand watering lots of uh, uh, plants, you know then I obviously prefer a bed because it just makes it way easier, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, beds have their own uh, disadvantages. I find uh, you know if I can hand water pots, I can you get a higher quality uh, uh, and metabolize all the uh, the get the most out of using the least amount of soil. You know, but uh, sometimes uh, to finish out at the end, I like to have a, an automated watering system to get me through that last month. You know, because sometimes, uh, you know, I like a plant uh, that gets, a, you know, maybe two light waterings a day instead of one heavy one. You know, and, uh, you know, especially when I get them to that point, those are the ones that give me those really good organic yields. You know, where I get an ounce per gallon in a in a 15 gallon container. You know, I, I love pulling that out of a, you know, out of a four by four tent. You know, but I only got space for one, maybe two of those. You know, but I'd rather get the better quality out of two tens, you know, and only get, you know, you know, anywhere from, you know, 10 to, you know, six ounces, you know, but in my organic garden, uh, you know, with the ease of use and me not going for, you know, crazy yields, you know, if I get an ounce per gallon of soil, I'm happy. You know, if a 10 gives me 10, if a seven gives me seven, that's gravy. I did great. You know, and sometimes I'm happy if I get half that, you know, I, if I can uh, get uh, four ounces in a five gallon bucket and I can fit six of those under a, you know, uh, an LED that's 300 watts and, you know, get around three or four ounces a piece. I'm winning the game. Time, you know, three ounces times four, that, that that's plenty, you know, for a four by four square, you know, and I love these new LEDs and, you know, being able to adjust the, the fr friggin' stuff on them. And, you know, it's made so gardening so much easier for so many people, uh, you know, and ha having gardens in places where you just couldn't have them before. You know, I, I started, uh, you know, I ordered my first light out of a catalog you know, my second light got stolen out of a parking lot by my brother who was standing on my hood. You know, but, uh, uh, you know, that was in, you know, just after high school. Wait, your brother stole it or it was stolen uh, while he was watching it? Well, uh, my brother said, hey, man, uh, we got to run an errand. So uh, we, uh, he goes, hey, pull into this parking lot. So I pull into this parking lot. He goes, pull up in front of that power pole. I thought we were meeting somebody or something, you know, to, you know, to get some weed. He jumps on the hood of my car and grabs the light off the pole and rips it off and gets back in my car. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, and he's like, oh, I just got us another light. Go. And I'm like, I guess you can't put it back. So let's go. <laughs> That's sick as fuck. Oh, I thought he stole yeah. your light and gave no, it to no, someone else. No, no, he stole else. a light okay. out of a freaking parking right. lot. But, uh, you know, that was a, a long, long time ago. That's awesome, man. But That's uh, fucking that awesome. was it. Yeah, then we took it to uh, his apartment and set it up in his extra bedroom. His girlfriend found it uh, two days later, and then it came to my house. <laughs> Classic. Yep, because she didn't appreciate having a garden in her uh, in her uh, apartment that she didn't know about for a couple of days. But hey, when you're young <laughs> and dumb. Yeah, that reminds me the the wife of the dad at the bus stop. Uh, who I brought plants to their house two days ago, the wife was not very happy. <laughs> she was like chewing her husband out for letting me bring plants to their house. <laughs> and I was like, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, it's um, nice when your wife lets you grow. <laughs> here's a funny story. So a friend of mine in Independence this was right at the beginning of the medical marijuana program. Uh, so it was like the early, early 2000s. I think I was about 21 or 22. And uh, I was helping this gentleman with his garden. He was very sick. I think he had uh, uh, cancer. And uh, he was on a, a pain maintenance program. But he grew his own weed in his garage. He had just a little setup. And uh, uh, he had uh, uh, neighbor kids that were little hooligans. And they broke into his garage. And they stole his weed. And uh, uh, the police followed the leaves over to their house. 
and uh, and then arrested them for for having weed and stealing it. And uh, uh, we go to the police department and find out, you know, well, what's going to go on, you know, because uh, you know this, these were his plants and you have them now. And uh, they ended up uh, uh, having to give it to him, you know, and they, they made a big deal about it. They didn't like that at all, uh, that uh, they had to give us uh, uh, pot plants that were in 15 gallon containers and were already, you know, like, you know, three foot tall. They wanted to chop them all down and, you know, just say, you know, tough luck. But, uh, you know, as soon as a uh, 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 dude came in and, you know, I'm like, hey, they, you know, you know, this is this is who they belong to. And. You know, we ended up leaving, like, you know, walking out of the police department with uh, six plants in 15 gallon containers. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was just really, really strange at that time. You know, uh, you know, what what year was that? That was in like uh, 2002 or 2003. Yeah, that was a. so this is kind of like the transition of when it became legal and the police were like, motherfuckers, like we want to yeah. nail you, but we can't. Well, it was one of those things where they loved to bust medical, any me- one growing medical that wasn't truly sick, you know, or was growing for other people. So if I was growing it for my friend who was sick at my house, they would totally come into my house and bust me, you know. But uh, if the sick guy is growing for himself. They're not going to go, you know, they're they're not going to make it on the news for arresting a a guy in a wheelchair who just got out of chemo, (laughs) you know, but, uh, but, you know, a a 20 year old with tattoos, Hey, you know, he's, he's just doing it for the drugs, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, that, that was even before they had dispensaries in Oregon, you know, that, that took a long time, you know, before then you were just supposed to grow it yourself. I remember seeing like these little old ladies and these cancer patients walking out of these clinics with like, you know, two little plants in their hands and they're walking with a walker. And I'm like, what's this? Po- they expect this poor little old lady to go buy a light and set up a garden in her closet. You know, <laughs> they, like, they give her like printed instructions. Like, okay, yeah. first you grow the plant and then the flowers are what you want and you <laughs> cut them, but don't cut them too early. Don't cut them too late. Yes. Then yep. you have to dry and cure them and you have to yeah. be very accurate in your drying and curing process. And then after that, you have to smoke it. <laughs> and these yeah. women are like trying to follow along. And it's, it just, yeah, it never, never went. Good. But I hope they didn't have grandma hand water in. That's no <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, it, back then, the, uh, the, uh, the caveat with the law in Oregon was uh, if you bought this uh, jar uh, that I'm selling on Craigslist, I would donate you this jar for 40 bucks. I would donate an eighth to you. And that worked for about six months until they started, you know, busting people for that. I remember the Craigslist days in Oregon. Yeah, main, they were. Main, main seemed very similar, where you could buy a sweatshirt for X amount and then just get gifted. Exactly. Like, you it, know. It, la- it lasted about the same amount of time. I'd say maybe a little more, maybe like. Nine yeah, you know, it, it went months. from, uh, uh, you know, would you buy this jar to would you want to buy this coffee mug or anything that could fit a, a baggie in? One of one you of know. the most creative ones I saw was uh, a buddy started a psychic service. Where if you had lost a bag of cannabis around the Portland, Maine area, the other Portland, then he would locate it for you for a certain fee. So let's say you lost, you know, that's amazing amount of X, Y, Z strain. Him and his crew of psychics would uh, relocate it for the uh, the appropriate rate. And that's that dope. one seems like it's just such a weird loophole where I think they're still going with it. I haven't checked in with them for a while, but uh, that's probably one of the most creative ones I've ever that's seen. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Like in location. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. And that's legal. Uh, I don't know. Ish. But I think Legal-ish. So or the police can't fit. The point is the police are like, fuck, like, <laughs> we can't well, do anything. I would like to think they're more busy in New York with more serious things. I would hope. <laughs> I've been on a subway. I certainly would hope. I haven't been in New York in a while. Yeah, it's been a long time. And it's same here. Same here. I got to take a trip out But uh, all right. Well, should we wrap it up? Let's sure. wrap it up. Josh, thank you very much. No problem. Man, we really appreciate you, fun. man. That was so awesome. Does anyone in the chat have more questions for Josh? Uh, well, uh, if anybody does, uh, uh, you know, they uh, can always get a hold of me through uh, 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 the BioLag website. Uh, that uh, uh, There's a 1-800 number there that uh, uh, you can get a hold of me and, you know, ask me any questions you want. 
You can also send uh, questions to, uh, I believe there's a link on the web, on the website uh, to ask questions for uh, technical questions to bioag that goes to my email. So, uh, you know, send, uh, ask me anything. I'm, I'm here to help. So in, I assume a drop down, it's like, this question is technical. It goes to you. Uh, well, I think it's just any question that goes through the website. <laughs> so every question out. from the website goes to you. I think so. I think me and like two other guys, it just depends on who answers at first. Most of the time, that's me. Okay, so tomorrow I want everybody to ask a question. <laughs> Using the do. BioAg website, contact us form. Yeah, oh yeah, and uh, I got a, uh, I'm doing a couple of vendor days here in Oregon. Uh, if anybody uh, uh, gets a chance, I'll be in, uh, uh, let me think here, I'll be in uh, uh, this Wednesday, I'm going to be in uh, uh, Eugene, Oregon at Emerald Valley Garden Supply. Uh, uh, I'll be there all day from uh, 11 to 5, uh, uh, giving out bioag samples and uh, talking about biostimulants. Uh, I'm also doing a vendor day in, uh, I believe, on the 8th in Salem, Oregon at Legacy Garden Supply, uh, doing the same thing. Uh, I will also be doing uh, another one uh, in, uh, I believe it was, uh, oh, I can't remember. But I'll let you guys know. I got at least uh, three or four going this month. Uh, I'll be out there giving out samples and talking to people. Uh, you know, come on down and uh, say hello. Uh, it will all be posted on the BioAg Instagram website. So check us out. It's the place to be. Hell yeah. So, so I have a question. Do you, do you think there's anyone or anyone who gives out more bioag samples than I do? Because <laughs> uh, as I think about how many bioag samples I send out every week, I'm like, I would challenge someone else to say they send out more samples than I do. I, I would think that uh, uh, you were probably in uh, uh, the top uh, uh, two. Yes. You know, if there's anyone uh, uh, that I want to know who else sends out more be, samples and I'm going to would be the shipping lady at BioAg. OK, that's my lady. Know... Karen. She, she is. Uh, she What's is her name? Glue. Her name's Karen. She is the Karen. glue that keeps uh, BioAg together. I'm going to talk to Karen and I want to get specific numbers of how many samples she sends it every week, because when I pass her, I'm going to talk shit. All right. Peter, so, the you, man. Have, so right. you have to, you have to introduce me to, is it Karen? Karen. Yes. Okay. This week I look forward to meeting Karen. All right. I'm going to have to get some of those samples from you, Peter. I got samples. Definitely that Calmino for sure. Oh yeah, give it a try. And the multi, the Definitely. multi, that multi too. Are those I want it all. I want it all, man. Like living soil. In a, Absolutely, like a that's bed? where they shine the best. All okay. my stuff will work in hydro, but it where is where it, it shines is organic living soil. You know, but you can also, if you're going with a, a two part hydroponic mix and you expect better flavor and you want to use less chemicals to get a better yield, that's the best way of doing it. Is with different types of. Uh, biostimulants that increase your uptake and reduce your reliance on salt you know so you get the you know 1400 or 1800 parts per million yields at you know a thousand parts per million or 800 parts per million using less salt to grow a bigger better plant you know and that's with amino acids humic acids fulvic acids you know different types of silica and lots of mycorrhizae you know and having a good automated watering system that keeps everything wet when you want it wet and not too wet <laughs> It's funny when I was making uh, the eggplant parm, I was also at the same time put it. So I have all this fish brew, fish hydrolysate, <laughs> and that shit smells like even with like the cap clothes on the bottle, you're like, like, I definitely smell it. So to ship it, I've been like vacuum sealing everything i got a bag of that stuff here it stinks <laughs> oh dude, so potent so early yeah so this is like the sample size fish hydrolysate and i wrote so to whoever gets this I, actually hydrolysate is not poo but i wrote fish poo from peter <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i'm gonna sign each one nice uh but yeah, but yeah man, that stuff smells bad. That stuff smells like a punch in the throat. 
that stuff smells bad. And, and trying to get like liquid samples out, like I have, so this is like everybody who has liquid products does not do a very good job of um, giving me confidence that if that liquid product ships, <laughs> the cat will not come loose. Come and like, like imagine fish hydrolysate where like the, the post, like the, <laughs> the mailman is like oh, walking yeah. with his box and is like, <laughs> this smells like some nasty shit. Like I know shit and this is like, they don't know it's fish hydrolysate no, no. It but just they're just like, like ah, what is this? <laughs> the whole truck stinks. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I was very clever. Like even the full size ones I put in. <laughs> good call. Very good call. No one wants that spilling on their mail. Is so. that from the folks that were on a couple weeks ago? The fish brew people, yeah. Awesome. Cool. So Thank there's you. fish poo, which actually the poo doesn't smell. Like I've been smelling those and I'm like, those smell totally fine. It's the hydrolysate that just stinks. Yeah, yeah. That's the ground up fish. That's, yeah. Yeah, I got some of that right here. Not... Organic ag products, Proteina Pura Seco, pure protein dry. That's the stuff. That's just fish hydrolysate, pretty much, I think. Yeah, that's what that yeah. is. Like powdered hydrolysate? Yeah, I think it's freeze-dried. Mm -hmm. I just mix it into my water. Yeah, those uh, guys, uh, uh, Sensational Solutions makes uh, 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 exact same stuff. Yeah, there's, a, there's a bunch of good uh, companies that and make does the dry And does the dry powder stink? Yeah, yes. it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. And then when you mix it with the water, too, it activates it. Like Gabe, it Gabe it and I were mixing it, and... Uh, <laughs> Were you like, was that you? <laughs> He's like, that was no, not he, me. He had to put the respirator on. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> a wise decision to wear a respirator yeah. when dealing with well, that. Well, I, I, I wear mine that. pretty much every time I'm mixing any sort of powdered additive. Yeah, it's it's just, I, dude, I've made myself really sick once with insect frass, top Ooh. dressing. Oh, Hell dude. Not. Yeah, dude, it's it's never worth it. Always wear a respirator whenever you're doing any dry amendment. Perlite, that. anything. That. If it's a powder, wear the mask. It ain't worth the fucking... It's not worth it. it. It's not, not worth it. That. <laughs> no, I, I played with a lot of insect frass and a lot of other stuff without a, a yeah. mask. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you get a, 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 viral, a, a viral pneumonia infection. Oh, yeah. I got a fire you know, mask, I'll wear that. Oh, is, you should wear that out sometimes. Yeah, I'll wear it out to the next event we do, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I got to jump. This was a wonderful conversation, and I can't wait for the next one. Thank yeah, you so well, much. Let's, let's wrap it. So, all right, with that, uh, what is it, Monday night? I know we have stuff going on uh, tomorrow. Yeah. I just have no idea what Monday it is. Monday night but, uh... in the garden. Chilling. Oh, yeah. Anyway, thank you, My Josh. <laughs> Anytime, Peter. Thank you, everyone, for showing on. their plans. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And whatever we have tomorrow, uh, I will see you there. All right, guys. Thanks again, everyone. See ya.